Welcome to another Friday night of funny and frying and slashing and bashing here. Welcome to Goblins Under the Stairs here. Guts, 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 guts. You got so right to destroy here. Ready to slash and bash me a Friday night away. Along with the baldiest baldy of them all, Fang the Mang. The chattiest chatty of them all, Wilmore Chattington. And of course, the greatest and gingerest CM of them all, Nate Gonzalez. Now, to take us away on this adventure. Take it away here. Oh, thank you, Sorak the Destroyer, and welcome everybody to tonight's Friday night edition of Goblins Under the Stairs. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we're already late, so let's, let's do a quick little recap. Uh, just get it rolling, right? Right? So, uh, last oh, time, yeah, last time we were all together, Sorak was having his self a time, tripping balls, saw his mother up in the sky, spoke some uh, words to her. She had some encouraging words to give to him and maybe uh, guide him on his way a little bit more. Uh, he also saw some trees moving about. Maybe he thought they were hallucinations for a moment, but it turned out they weren't. They were animated by some sort of black craziness that you guys all know about from Narvi. And one of them tried to grab Wilmore, and uh, a big fight ensued. You guys were able to take him down. Solrak did all the work, essentially. No one else helped out um, at all. And um, so you guys killed all <laughs> those trees and um, saw the, this black ichor that they were, was on them, and that animated them, and Wilmore was able to do deduce exactly uh, what it was. And uh, you guys got some sleep, woke up the next morning feeling extra powerful and recharged as you guys woke up level 9. And uh, yeah, Fang had that little bit of a healing cleric energy from Lathander within him and uh, ready to get you guys healed up and ready to go. Uh, you guys said your goodbyes to the Seven Dwarves and Major Way, decided not to go to the mine with the uh, gems in it. And as you guys I kept on going, Solrak fell into a tree well, you guys got him out of there. Uh, I saw some elk in the distance and started chasing them a bit, shot one of them down and uh, gutted him and cooked him up real quick and then ch uh, chased after the rest of them where you guys came across a massive battle scene, which you guys are at right now, of a, it was like 16 Uthgar barbarians and two frost giants all slayed uh, across the field here. Uh, brutal massacre, you guys see like a bunch of vultures and wolves picking at the, the corpses. And, uh, yeah, as you guys were looking at the corpses, these winter wolves start creeping up on you guys, looking uh, fierce and look like they're ready to attack uh, something fresh. But uh, with some stealthy rolls and some sneaky moves, you guys were able to evade them up until uh, they heard some stomping of the frost giant in the distance approaching. And you guys have noticed that it's actually the same mutated frost giant that you guys uh, fought at Yarlmute, this uh, the giant relic site. And, uh, you know, still stealthing about, she was able to find... Where Wilmore was uh, specifically with uh, using our two or three heads now to pinpoint exactly where you guys are at, Wilmore pulled out the horn of blasting and uh, blew it right in her direction, causing this thunderous noise to erupt and expose uh, you all to her and do a little bit of damage to her as well. Uh, she looks down at Wilmore now in the tree below and sees him after he blows a hole out of the, the branches using this horn of blasting. Says, I will punish you and smash your bones into a pop. And everyone, let's roll initiative. Right into it. Sixteen. <clears throat> One second. I gotta launch my thing again. There we are. What I get? Delete sanity and uh, Quam out of here. Oh wow, I got two. Twenty-one. Very nice. And wait, did she only see Chaddington at this point? At this point, yeah, she only saw Chaddington. Okay. Cool. But she's ready to strike. And so, I mean, you guys could leave Chatting. You guys don't need a roll initiative, you guys, if you don't want to. But she's ready to strike Chaddington at least. I should see. For sure. Um, yeah, so uh, Chaddington blows the horn of blasting. <sighs> uh, she grabs her ears after this erupting noise of thunder um, just surrounds her and blows the branches out, and some of the rock structure behind you, uh, behind her crumbles a bit. Uh, she's got direct eyesight with you, Wilmer, now. What do you do? Well, I'm going to go, that didn't go as planned. And then, um, it's, what, what weapon is she holding? 
she has dragging with uh, behind her a anvil that's attached to a chain. An anvil that's so she's holding like a metal chain. She is. I am going to cast heat metal, level two on the chain. Okay, is that a uh, save for me, or it automatically hits? Right. Unless it automatically it. hits. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's hot, and she takes damage until yep. she drops it. Yep. That's... So um, yeah. Describe how you well, uh, damage. make that chain glow in here. So, so the horn goes off, and it obviously does absolutely nothing to her. So I, I go, whew, that didn't go well, and I just kind of start start running away, screaming aimlessly, help, 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 and I just kind of flick backwards. Um, a little purple, just a little purple mist shoots out of my fingers. She could barely see it, and it just kind of wraps right around her touches the chain and the whole chain just starts glowing red. Awesome. That chain That's starts something. glowing red, burning her hand, and uh, let me just reread. You have concentration on that, right? Yes. Yeah, I believe I need concentration for it, yeah. Marked. Creature holding or wearing the object takes damage from it. Creature must succeed on a con saving throw or drop the object. So I do have to... Make... Yep, yep. Um, okay, so con... My save is 15. On a natural one, I got a 12. Ooh. Ooh. Damn, that's a plus 11 con. You... <laughs> yep. So, um, all right. So she uh, takes that damage, right? And then drops the chain out of her hand, starts, you know, ah, 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 fling her hand about as she looks down at the burning and like blistering of her hand right there. Uh, yeah, great turn. Anything else for you? Um, He's going to fly away. He's going to just move back and kind of stand like behind the tree if he can <laughs> it can't okay. hide but Absolutely. and then sanity will um sanity is just gonna fly up here and just kind of squawk on the tree for a second okay sounds good uh yep chain is down on the ground she's no longer holding her weapon uh brutus is turned now uh he's not looking to move forward towards this uh this Mutated Frost Giant quite yet, so he's just going to stand next to Soul Rack and wait for his move. Fan, you're up. All right. So while I'm kind of hidden, I uh, I take this moment and uh, use a bonus action to uh, harness my elemental force. I, I become grounded with the earth and just kind of flex and close my eyes and, you know, start feeling all the energy from the elements start flowing through my body as the tattoos on my body start to glow. And then I uh, I rush forward um, so that I'm about 15 feet away. So that's 20 feet of distance. And I stab, or I, I, I go and point my quarter staff towards the uh, giant and out comes a uh, a big old fireball right at the giant. Fireball, go for it, man. Oh, it was on 20. Uh, 11. 11's gonna miss. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm gonna come back and do it again. We got a plus 9 now, huh? I know. 13, damn. Um, a 13 also is gonna miss, unfortunately. She's kind of like looking at her hand, it's stinging and burning and bouncing all around. You come up and unable to hit as she's uh, kind of evading your moves. Yeah. And, anything and else? That, yeah, and then I'm just going to kind of, uh, so I have, I'm going to retreat back to where I uh, came from. Okay. She now notices you in the corner back there. Uh, what's Actually, going on? Actually, hey, would I have had advantage since I was still hidden? No. Okay. I didn't know if that was considered a sneak attack or anything. Nope. Cuomo? Oh, yep. Uh, Cuomo... Let's see. Cuomo's just gonna... Can I have him... follow me on my next turn? Uh, Is that... Yeah, you can ready his movement. Okay. If you want. Yeah. So, like... And then for the help action, I have to be within five feet of the giant, correct? Uh, yes. Oh, the Cuomo has to be within five feet. Cuomo has to be within five feet? Okay. 
Is it possible for me to, like, when I move to get within five feet, he moves with me? Is that, can can he, can I ready that for him? Um, sure, I'll, I'll call it your readying the help action for him, too. When you move, he moves up with you. Yep, okay, so that's going to be his action. Okay, uh, Solrak, what you got? All right, here. Yeah. Well, I look over at, at Brutus and give him a nod. I said, boy, hope I see you soon. And I had no I still have my giant slayer greatsword. So I can ready that baby up. And I say, it's rage time here! Yeah! And uh, I hope that this alerted this giant bitch that it's on. So I say, hey! Big girl! Don't lose a head over it. It's time to lose them all, yeah! I'm gonna dash. And I'm uh, 55 feet away, so I have perfect dashing. Cool. Picture. Perfect. <laughs> so it rages uh, and starts bolting it over to the mutated giant. And it's giant Slayer Greatsword time here. Yeah. So are you using your action surge then? Because uh, dash is an action. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'll use it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that 28's a hit for sure. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. And uh, whoop, 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 that's a 2d6 plus 5 plus an additional 2d6s. Dang. So that is a 6. So that is 20 damage. 20 damage. Very nice. And do I get a second swing on that? You do, since it's another second action. Swing. Yep. Yeah, buddy. You get two attacks in action. All right. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, 24. 24 is a hit. Plus 2d6s. Uh. 14, 16. Actually, and it's 22 damage on the last one, not 20, because of my rage. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Um, And what's the slasher feat also do now? It reduces her speed by 10 feet? Is that what it is? If that is right. Uh, yeah, when you score a critical hit that deals slashing damage to a creature, you grievously wound it. So the start of your next turn, the target has disadvantage. Well, that's if you crit, attack. but no, the one above that. Once per turn, uh, when you lunging. no, once per turn when you hit a creature with an attack that deals slashing damage, you can reduce the speed of the target by ten feet. So uh, yeah. yeah, when you do slashing damage, her speed reduces by ten feet. Cool. Um, all right, two big slashes come into this mutated frost giant. Uh, you do some massive wounds into her, and you see the wounds, like, she's got all these scars all over her body that seem to be healed over and everything. You notice that these scar, or these wounds don't look like they're, like, healing back over. Um, anything else for you? That's it. Okay. Um, she's now just got her, her anvil on the ground and still glowing this warm heat and energy off of it, uh, afraid to pick it up. She's just gonna go and wail at you two times, Solrak, as she's, she's gonna punch you. Uh, well, she's first, she looks at you and looks down at her legs as uh, they're all gashed up and bleeding. And she looks at you and goes, Oh, you're not the only one who can rage. And uh, you see her start, her muscles start bulging out and everything. And her one head like starts twisting toward the one like third new grown head starts twisting you. And you see the eyes grow large and uh, glowing red. And she takes up a, a fist. She goes, just deck you with it. Um, uh -oh. A 26 to hit. Shit! Um, she's gonna do... Let's do this. Because it's a custom roll. She's gonna do a total of... 17 damage as she punches you in the face. Massive hit, uh, so half of that, so uh, eight damage. Ooh. And then she winds up another swing, and she rolls a 14 on this one. Yeah, buddy, uh, she's going to miss, and I'm going to uh, hit that biash with a rye post. Okay. And uh, 
an attacker, so let me spend one of my die. Absolutely. All right, and it's Giant Slayer. Great sword time here. Go for it. She swings, uh, hits you in the face, 17. and knocks you back. Swings again, and because uh, you're knocked back, she misses you. You see an opportunity to swing at her legs, and you nail her. Uh, roll damage. Yeah, buddy. Cut right across her shins. That's a 10 so far. Woo, 21 here. Yeah. Nice, 21 damage. And I get a second swing on that as well, or no? No, it's, so it's it's the one right. swing, it's the one damage, and then add the superiority die damage to it as well. Roll a d8 if you didn't do that. Oh, yeah, I did that. Woo, baby. So we're 21 so far. And that's an 8. <laughs> 29 damage. 29. <laughs> Damn, Solrek. What a reaction. Uh, she's not looking very happy about that as you slash three massive slashes into her legs. Uh, you see her raging out full of, uh, anger and, uh, uh, she's looking pretty hurt though with that. Uh, Wilmore, what you got? I'm gonna peek out behind the tree and go, I'm gonna eat your brains when you die. That's gonna be a Desonant Whispers, the 15 wisdom save. <laughs> gonna eat your brains when you die. Uh, 15 whiz. Let's see what I got. I rolled another natural one. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> so that's 9 damage, and Solrak gets opportunity? He does. Uh, I have to run back as far as I can. She runs back, slams into the, the building right there. Uh, Solrak, you're able to slash if you'd like. Actually, I'm sorry, you cannot because you used your reaction on your last turn and it hasn't been your turn yet. So I'm sorry, ah. you cannot. Okay. That was a good, good attempt, though, Wilmore. Yes. Yeah, I should have thought about that. Yep, I should have thought about that. Um, is she standing on her anvil by now, by chance? Um, She's not. It just, like, dropped it to the ground, ah, yeah. All right. Then should, I'm going to stay. <laughs> I'm going to stay over here. Um, Sanity's going to squish down, sit right on this ledge, and just scream at her. Um, eat your brains! Eat your brains! <laughs> and that's going to be help action to Solrak. Love it. Uh, anything else for you and Sanity? Uh, I'm going to roll a d8. One for me, for my bonus action. And then I'm just going to stay tucked behind this lovely little tree over here. Sounds good to me. Uh, Brutus is up now. He sees Solrak run up, and Solrak gave him this kind of encouraging words, like, you know, it's time... We gotta do this. Brutus is gonna run up and kind of just stay behind Solrak, not attack yet, uh, looking like he's in a defensive position, if you will, and just kind of like stand his nice. ground. Uh, <laughs> Fang, you were up. Big defensive position guy. That's right. All right. So I uh, I see the giant looking weaker and weaker from uh, Solrak. So I kind of uh, look over to uh, Cuomo, give him the nod, and say, "Now's the time for us." So we head on over together. Um, because I readied that, and I'm holding my quarter staff, and I'm trying a different thing. So the 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 last foot of my quarter staff it starts to glow with this raging ember as I swing like a baseball bat right in his knee. Hell yeah, swing the hit, man! Oh my god, <laughs> twelve. Ember Didn't goes you out on your way. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. 19? 19's there. a hit. And, all right. So, 7 plus, oh, 8. Um, and just that one is fire damage? Yeah, uh, correct. Okay. Uh, where'd you swing that? Where'd you hit her? Like, in the knee. Okay, cool. Yeah, you hit her in the knee, uh, you see it burn into her flesh, the flesh kind of like starts spreading out and opening up, you exposing the bone underneath of it, and it looks like the flesh is like starting to eat away, just like pulling away from where you burned her. Right, and then I do that <coughs> swing, and then I just kind of come back real quick. Do it again! Oh my god. <laughs> what is with these light dice? <laughs> That's Jeez. a miss, man. Unfortunately. <laughs> All um, right. Bonus action. Bonus action. Uh, 
Yeah, so I'm going I'm to spend a uh, key point and do Flurry of Bows. Cool. 18? 18 is a hit, yeah. Uh, nice. For one of them, yeah. So there's 8 plus... Oh, 14. Very nice. And then, so that's 1. Oh my god, a 12. Um, 12 is going to miss. Uh, yeah, but that second hit, you hit her, and uh, as you hit her, that flaming energy comes out, erupting out of her hand, and you punch her, kind of like lower in the shin area, and same kind of thing, as you see the burning of your fist hit her skin, the skin just kind of starts peeling away and exposing, looks like rotting, and it's pretty nasty stuff. Um, Cuomo. All right, so Cuomo kind of sees that knee starting to like rot a little bit, and he's going to go right for it. He's gonna try and take like a like a bite with his beak out of uh, that area. Nasty, but go for it. Yeah. Sorry, he's a bird, like a turkey vulture. They do be like that. Yeah. Well Did established that, roll? that birds are dirty creatures on this <laughs> stream. We that certainly have. Okay. All right, hold on. Excuse me. All right, for some reason that's not rolling. I'll just roll a d20. What, what was? You care? You're just a bald guy. <laughs> Just a little uh, guy. <laughs> 20. Yeah, 20 is it. Yeah. Yes. So he gets a D10. So 11. Cool. And how does Nunkin? Uh, oh, man! <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw my laptop. Yeah, right. All right, and then uh, he's he's gonna start to claw at it too, and try and make the wound even like start wider. peeling the flesh yeah. down and everything. Ugh, that's gross. Oh, not one Cuomo. No, uh, Cuomo, unfortunately, is not able to scratch that one. So, Rack, what you got? All right, so uh, walk up to her, and now this is kind of like in. Uh, Rocky three, he's fighting Mr. T the second time around, right? He's been training and he's badass. He's like, you ain't so bad. And Mr. T like punches him. He's like, you ain't so bad. So I'm basically just walking up to her. Just be like, you think you grow a third head and we're going to be scared of you? You ain't so bad. I'm going to swing my giant slayer great sword at her. Do it. And that's 12, but I do have advantage, so I'm going to use it. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh my god, that's a fucking 11. Hey, right, you're taunting her, you're not so bad, and you swing once and she just dodges out of your way. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, then I'm gonna swing again here. Yeah, 23. 23's a hit. As she leans over, you see an opportunity to slash into her. That's a 10 so far, plus 8. 18. 18. Oh, yeah, and also, I have to do a strength saving throw or something, right? Read read your weapon uh, description. Oh, yeah, for the grid. Hold on. When you get hit a giant, the giant takes an extra 2d6. Must succeed in, yeah, DC 15 strength saving throw or fall prone. I rolled a 30, so. Ooh. <laughs> That's a strong guy. <laughs> Great uh, balance. Yeah. Cool. Take surfing lessons in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, nice, nice solid hit on that one. You got uh, a bonus action? Oh no, you. I guess you don't have a swing on your bonus action. But uh, I'll use my second wind, and uh, regain one d10 plus six HP. Beautiful. How's that look when you do that? Do you just like kind of rate, like Hulk out again? Yeah, basically, I. Uh... I get psyched that I swung at this bitch. And I say, you ain't so bad, look! And then I start healing. Hey! Nice. So you're just able to fight through the pain. Uh, she looks at you. Um, she looks all around her. She's kind of surrounded. She's going to like start like just taking like a sweeping attack. And try to hit uh, Sorak and Fang. Rolls a, a 30 on the Sorak. And a nat 20 on the fang. Uh, so the soul rack hit gets... Um, she 
axe just comes around, swinging, massive fist hits you, Sorak does, um, 19 points of bludgeoning damage, had so, 9 points of bludgeoning damage, and then Fang, you get... I don't, I don't like that. shouldn't be taking this long. Uh, tw twenty-seven. Uh, oh, okay. Bludgeoning okay. damage. Yeah. Right. Could be worse. Uh, Could be better though. Yeah, twenty-seven. Yep. And uh, she looks at you with this rage in her eyes. Um, you guys can still see that those wounds, you know, like I mentioned, she has all these scars and warts all over her that seem to have been healed over, but these wounds don't seem to be, like, healing at all on her. Uh, Wilmore. Um, so, I'm going to, yeah, nobody's used their reaction yet, so I'm going to run over here, and while I'm kind of tiptoeing around, I'm going to, it's coming to eat ya! And that's going to be another Destinate Whispers, we're going to try this again. Yeah, I rolled an eight. Yay! Yeah, so, we all get one Fang, one. Cuomo, Solrak. Yep. Alright. Oh my god. Roll that again. I, wanna, I just I want to see if that's the real yeah, deal. See. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Are like... 27 here! Yeah, yeah that... no, it was 14. Uh, it was right, so, so three, ones. three damage. Alright. Well, at least everyone else is going to get some damage. Um, okay, so... That's a nine. And I got I, 10 on him. She can only move... So her movement's reduced 10 feet because of solar X slashing. So she, she moves 17. 30 feet. And you have to roll a thingy. Yes, strength saving throw. Uh, so you did 17 damage? Yep. 17, 10, and, and I, 3. That's and I did points. 10. And then, uh, quote my best. 9. 17, That's 10, and, 17, 10, and 3. Is that what I heard? Yep. You're you. Cool. Uh, massive... <laughs> so Fang, did you did you hit her or quarter staff rather? I guess. Yeah. All right, quarter staff, big old whack across uh, one side of her Solrak, massive slash into her, and then uh, Cuomo hit. Yeah. And uh, and uh, two of that damage was uh, fire damage. Too. Right. I don't know. It yeah, seemed good. like it mattered when good. you uh, good to know. said yeah. that. Yeah. Um, she's and, hawks and down, bends over, looking super fucking weak. And uh, spits on the ground out of one head and spits out of the ground out of the other head and looks up with her piercing blue eyes. Uh, is that all you've got? Wait, don't you, she also have to roll the... I, I rolled a 28, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. My bad. I no, good. Um, uh, Wilmore, anything else? Oh, uh, no, that's as far as I can move. And then um, Sanity will just fly back over and just... Uh, and just circle her head going um yummy brains brains were soaked yummy brains love it um brutus is up now he's going to stay up next to his uh his homie soul rack and just kind of keep him company fang what you got all right i'm gonna tr um yeah i'm gonna again uh, actually i'm gonna move within so i'll be 15 feet away and again i'm gonna like kind of swing my uh quarterstaff and out this come this like fire beam right at him love it it's, it's like a streak uh, of fire erupting from the ground in a straight line in her direction yep. 17 17 hits yeah so eight points of bludgeoning damage and then two fire damage Okay, so ten total. <laughs> and then again... Flame streaks across, erupts underneath of her, takes her down to her knees. Twenty. Nice. Ten bludgeoning. Oh, and five fire. Fifteen right there. And go ahead and uh, let us know. Let, how to do it? Let us know how, how it's done. Yeah. I, I see you're kind of, like, looking a little rough. And so I'm thinking, I gotta finish her. And I really charge this one up, point that, that quarterstaff her, and this fire beam comes right at her and just knocks her back. And her, her body's kind of on fire, too. Yeah, you watch as the flames burn all of her furs and uh, 
patchwork armor that she's wearing off of her body, and as I mentioned, the skin on her flesh as it's burning seems to start like corroding and melting off of her bones, and you can see all like the un underneath of like the tendons and, and bones and all the organs inside of her just kind of s melting away into a pile in the snow right here. As yes, this fire seems to have done the trick to get this uh this giant out of your guys uh guys path out of your way. As, as she's burning, I just look over and I go, huh, "You make over, same old bitch." It's <laughs> my favorite e show. <laughs> 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 All right, so, so you guys now look over as Fang has made this fire erupt from the ground and take out this co this uh, frost giant, mutated frost giant, and this, oh God, this okay. oh, back. and she is, of course, as you can see, no longer a threat as her flesh is melted off of her body and uh, just a skeletal corpse lying there now. Well, Ooh. that was interesting. So. Hmm. Do you think we need to do anything else to make sure she's done for this time? Like, I don't know, like, chop off all three of its heads? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. I, I mean... Gonna, let me see how, uh, let's take an investigation rule, I guess. I'm gonna see how, uh, how burnt up, like, are her heads still intact? Yeah, you can do an investigation, but I mean, you can see like all the flesh is like melted off of her skin. Essentially, I mean, it's been about five minutes since the battle has cleared and the fire has taken over her body to allow for the skin to just kind of pull off and uh, look like it's almost like acid bath like damage. You know, like she was dipped into a vat of acid and all the f the flesh pulled off of her skin, all of, uh, of her body looks, rather. Uh, looks pretty beat up to me. I don't know. Wilmer, why don't you make a uh? A insight or history check, if you want. History check. Come on, big money. Nineteen. Yeah. Um, you you remember back at the Yarlmuth, the where the Seven Thrones were, uh, observing that she had like troll-like qualities to her, and piecing back in your memory what you know about trolls, and of course fighting the one at the carnival. Uh, you know that trolls take fire and acid damage to uh, make sure that they don't rejuvenate and uh, heal themselves. Well, I think, gentlemen, ho hold on one second. I'm, I'm going to try to cut her skull open. Can I do that with my rapier? Uh, rapier, you'd have to kind of like pierce all yeah. around it and stuff, yeah. but sure. Yeah, yeah. So, like so, fracture so, it. Yeah. Like while I'm doing it, like I'm just be like, so I think we... We may have a giant troll on our hands, gentlemen. We all know what that means, right? I'm just gonna look at them and wait for an answer. Uh, you you know better than we would. Bad jokes on Reddit. <laughs> I was waiting for something Reddit. like that. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there any brain in her in her head? Ah, uh, you, you crack through the skull, piercing through it the rapier. Yeah, there's some some uh, fleshy brain inside of there. Toss a little some, bit to Brutus. See go, buddy. matter. Brutus <laughs> smells it. Oh, oh. Turns his nose hey. up to it. I don't what blame you, you Brutus. We, we've got better food that you can eat, buddy. Yeah, don't offer that shit to my dog. I mean, and don't brain. you even think about it. offering that to Cuomo. He's on a strict diet. I'm gonna hold it up in the air and um, Sandy will come down and just take it out of my finger. A piece of the brain. And then, uh, yep, just a piece <laughs> of the brain. <laughs> and then, um, so, well, I, I, I think maybe we just light it on fire, and I think we'd be good at that point. She's kind of already on fire. Yeah, well, pretty... how about a little bit more on fire? And I just ignite like campfire, like right underneath of her, to see if it burns her a little bit more. Sure. You think that'll do? You, you make the create bonfire underneath of her and just start burning away at the bones a little bit. Uh, it takes a bit of time, but yeah, you see like the bones start turning to a bit of ash and cinder, and uh, yeah, it just seems like you know it'd be pretty hard for something like this to make its rounds back, the full recovery, or any recovery at all. <laughs> well, I think, <laughs> I think that does it. 
is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> I think I can walk around now. <laughs> uh, well, shall we be on our way before we so rudely interrupt it? And I pat her little dead skull. Yeah, let's uh, keep going. Now, uh, I wonder where we'll meet her again, even though, you know, she's pretty burnt. Perhaps her vengeance is something to watch out for. Something tells me it's quite strong. Well, we could drop her in the river. Eh, I don't know. It's kind of fun killing her. That's fair. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind fighting her again here. Yeah. <laughs> and now we know next time a little bit of fire, I think, will go a long way. Yeah, I, I think I have a, a few tricks up my sleeve that uh, might be able to help with that. I'll be yeah, I, I, I put I, away I my uh, now. I put my giant sword away and I take out demon sword and say, <laughs> "Now I always got fire by my side." That's fair. I think we could use that next time. Should before we head out, do you think maybe? I mean, there's a there's a nice little cove back there. Should we maybe take a rest, have a snack? Just for a short while. Well, you guys look a like little, you. a little hurt. Yeah, I, I think I could, I could do some traveling. I'm not too particularly hurt, but Fang, uh, I, could, I could just take a potion real quick. I, I think it's best to just keep on keeping on, you know. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. So, you know, I, I do have this one potion of uh, greater healing. Um, should should we maybe save that for more of an emergency where we can't just take take like an hour and hang out for a bit? You know, yeah, say save it, and if we uh, we need to, battle situation arises, take it then. That's fine. All right, I'll just take a I'll just take a regular potion then, just one. Uh, again, I have both my regular swords out now. All I'm right. Giant. And where to, gum shoes? Well, uh, let's see. We can, can we still see like the the sea of moving ice? Yeah, from where you guys are standing currently, you guys would estimate that you're about an hour away from the sea of moving ice, like you know, walking distance in the snow. Well, if shall we, we, gentlemen? Shall I just start walking aimlessly, just like walking. not in the right direction. <laughs> then I. Uh... I just like scoot along. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> wow. Alright. Um still rackably in the way. Yeah, buddy. Alright. You guys um get all your stuff together and uh look around at the battlefield around you and leave uh behind the sight of Uthgar Barbarians and Frost Giants and of course this before, before we run, I'd, yeah. I'd um, check check the Frost Giants for for anything. Just the two Frost Giants. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you go over to the Frost Giants, and you want to just go ahead and check them out, see if they've got anything? Yeah, yeah rustle, rustle their tummies a little. Oh, know. sure thing. Uh, easy enough, you're able to see that they both had pretty substantial sized uh, bags along with them. Um I want each one of you guys roll a d100 for me, real quick, and I'll do one too. Uh, see, uh, in the first one that you're looking over, so it looks like inside of her bag is a, uh, it's about a five foot long chain and a wagon wheel. Um, and then in the other one, it looks like there's, um, looks to be a giant sized comb that me seems to be make made out of some sort of bone and a uh, an empty wooden barrel well, these look very helpful pick up pass does the wooden barrel have any uh, like etchings around the outside any any um, characters writing anything like that um from what you can tell, it doesn't seem to have any sort of markings on it. Well, this is lame. There's a whole cave of treasures. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Behold the cave of 
treasures. Wait a minute, <laughs> and, and did we, and this might be for more like last, did we figure out why these things are dead? Uh, yeah, there was a, from what you guys could tell, it seemed to be just some sort of great battle. The barbarians oh, yeah, yeah, holding yeah. their ground here, uh, storm giants, or the frost giants coming around and, uh, you know, causing a ruckus and trying to take them all down and just a big battle ensued and it seemed like they all mutilated and killed each other. One more look in this little alcove over here. This little like, yeah, whatever the heck this place is. Yeah. Um. Go ahead and look it around real quick. You can make a uh, perception check for me. Um. General lookings around, you can see that it's just like some bed rolls spread out. Um. To be situated in there, there's a few, uh, like, racks of spears just kind of extremely thrown in there, and uh, there's n nothing really else much in there. Just like Where? like crappy weapons and uh, crappy bedrolls. Well, gentlemen, this looks like how Wilmore probably lives. He's trying to think of a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, shut him up, please. I think he's stuck. And then I just start shaking him. What are you doing? Oh my god, it's so funny. <sighs> okay. Alright, guys. All right. We're done. We're done. Hey, 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 Fang, do you remember that time Solrak made that joke about how I live in squalor? It was funny, wasn't it? That's funny again. I, I, I hear it. I hear. I do hear it's funny because it is true. Oh, Fang, <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> Not, it yeah, is it is. Mm. Hmm. Mm. He's acting a little weird, Solrak. <sighs> that is just, that is that is good stuff, Solrak. That is good stuff. That's <laughs> the usual Wilmore to me. <laughs> that, is, that is really funny, Solrak. I thought Solrak was the weird one. Uh... Hmm. You'll get used to it. Sanity starts laughing. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> <laughs> so right. funny. Brutus, Brutus is like, rough! Uh, Solrak, get, get a good sniff. See where we need to go. Alright. I think we just need to go that way. And I Let me know if you could smell anything over the squalor of where I live. <laughs> So, right, go ahead and make a survival check for me. Do go ahead and lead you guys through. Fifteen. All right. Uh, so you guys all get together, get uh, heading on back towards the sea of moving ice westward. And yeah, it's um, it's getting early evening now. It's about uh, five or six in the evening. Uh, sun is beginning to set, and you know it's starting to get a little bit chillier in the air um, as the sun dips behind the clouds now. Um, Solrak leads you guys on this journey towards the sea moving ice. Uh, and you guys see that there's like a, a pathway that opens up and seems to take you on um, towards in that direction. Uh, trees situated on one side, a few rocks on the other. Um, you know, it's pretty much like a, seems like a, a pretty straight away path to get to the sea moving ice. Let's do it. Wait, as I uh, as I walk from now on, uh, I'm going to start studying, especially at nighttime, like the the night skies and the patterns of the stars and stuff. See if I can start pinpointing when it's gonna be a full moon and when I'm gonna be a lichen. I like that. Yeah, we can definitely start doing that. Um, stars aren't quite out yet, but we can definitely as the night. Uh, it grows darker. We can do it. Something for that, for sure. Sweet. I like that. Uh, so, so Rack keeps leading you guys on, and you guys uh, keep on approaching closer and closer to this body of water out ahead. And uh, this path takes you on down. You guys go on for about 45 minutes to another hour until you get to the edge of the sea of moving ice at the end of this path. Up ahead, as you guys are moving your way through this path, uh, you notice something peculiar off the side of the path up here. 
you see what looks like a body frozen and seemed to be crawling in your guys' direction. It seemed to have been crawling in the direction in which you guys are coming from, not in your direction. You got you guys saw that, right? Interesting. Do we want to thaw it out, maybe? Looks like let's approach with caution, guys. I'd agree to that. Hmm. Kind of move up. Sanity will just kind of go up and fly over him for a little bit. And I'll get a closer look. Roll my eyes back. Okay. Uh, you roll your eyes back in your head, and you start seeing through Sanity's eyes instantly. And as you're closer up and flying above this body, yes, you notice it's a frozen body, uh, dead stiff, lying here in the snow. And you look around behind it, and you notice, uh, you know, uh, marks in the snow is, indicates that it was crawling in that direction. Uh, and you look further back, and you see that um, it seems to be the ice, the edge of the shore right there is a layer of ice that extends out into the water just a bit. And just beyond that, you can see a crack in the ice where it seems to be some sort of um, crates and inventory of sorts that it seem to be uh, sunken in there and floating. Is it cr oh, okay. It seems... And um, as Sanity, and you're looking up there through Sanity's eyes to get a closer look, go ahead and make an investigation roll for me. Um, see that this, uh, this human, uh, it's a male human that you can tell now, um, it's definitely looks like the, the way it's frosted over and everything it hasn't been too, too long, uh, maybe a day or two, not too much like snow over top of the body. And, um, it's just wearing like a dark outfit uh, and has a, a dagger sheathed at his side. Oh, gentlemen. I don't think foul play was involved with this body, but uh, there appears to be some stuff in the water ahead of us. You think we should help him? Let's see if he's uh, let's see if he's alive first, I guess. I slowly walk over there and say, something tells me it's a shipwreck, and uh, anything that was floating in that sea. Definitely not going to be alive. I go ahead and take a look. Not since we have this folding boot. And uh, I'm going to cautiously walk up to it, since we have fought quite a lot of undead things. But I'm going to smell to see if I detect that it's alive. Absolutely, yeah. You can make that uh, perception with advantage if you'd like. Sixteen. Sixteen, sure. Go on over and smell the body. Doesn't give off much of a smell, uh, given the conditions out here, and uh, not much uh, decomposition can happen, uh, you know, with the extreme cold of the weather. Uh, but you can definitely, as you get a bit closer, you can tell that this body is, is frozen stiff and corpse. Uh, and I uh, tap it with a one slayer sword and say, look... Literally, it might as well be a popsicle. And clink, clink. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I am gonna walk over towards the path where he came from and see if I can see anything from the like, crates that are floating in there without getting in that water, of course. Okay. So are you you're uh, gonna start walking out onto the ice, or just stay at the shore there? At the shore. At the okay. Like I'll, yeah. stop. I'll stop right here. Uh, you may make a perception check from right there. Uh, checking out <laughs> the crates that you can see out there. You can see that seems to be a few of them floating. A couple of them look a little submerged. Uh, yeah. On um, one of the crates that you see floating at the top, um, you see a uh, image of a, of a goose on the side of it. Hey, guys! 
image of a goose there on some of these crates. I mean anything to anybody? Sure. Uh, Cuomo, why don't you go out and uh, see if you can retrieve the uh, crate for us, bringing it back. So I'm going to see if I can have Cuomo do that. Sure. Cuomo flies on out over the crates. Uh, it's hovering right over this uh, this broken spot of the broken ice in the water here. And Cuomo goes down and tries to grab at the crates, but there doesn't seem to be any, like, you know, right areas for Cuomo to be able to grab her talons in, or his talons into and be able to, you know, grip up or anything. You know, it's pretty solid, flat wood surfaces. So it's not much that I would imagine be able to dig her talons into, but you can try to do... It's going to be a high DC, but go ahead and do a, a strength check. Okay. Uh, 19 and plus 3, so 22. Okay. Cuomo sees a, a smaller crate in her vicinity that seems to be uh, just able to get into the grasp of her talons. Uh, I keep on saying her. Is Cuomo a boy or a girl? Cuomo's a male. Okay, okay, sorry. Cuomo is a dude. Check. Yeah, how dare you assume that? <laughs> <laughs> My bad, I know. Uh, so Cuomo grabs this uh, this wooden, almost like a coffer, out of the, the water here, uh, picks it up in, her, in his claws, and begins flying in your direction with it. Does this one also have the uh, goose emblem on it? Um, It does have it on there. Okay. Um, gents, I mean, I know I haven't been with you for... Uh... A long period of time. This this emblem doesn't ring any bells to me. Um, perhaps maybe on previous adventures you may have seen this. Yay, nay. A goose? I don't recall a goose. I recall a dragon and and and, and um, the ingots. But I don't really recall a goose. Well, let's just crack it open, see what we got in there, and. So I'm just going to take my quarterstaff and just kind of... Actually, hold on. I'll, I'll sheathe my uh, quarterstaff and uh, pull out... What is it? I have something. I guess I don't. Uh, so, why don't you just, like, chop this open, huh? <laughs> Though you never ask. Swing. I uh, one slayer at it. And make make a uh, an athletics check. Okay. This is a plus eight. <laughs> Twenty four. <laughs> Wood shatters across the snow right there, uh, leaving behind inside uh, a couple of rolled up pieces of paper, parchment. Madam, and I point to the. Inside the box, for fact to go in. I uh, I I pull out I guess like the nearest parchment papers and unroll them and just examine them, see what exactly they are. Yeah, it's, so, uh, you pull them out and start you know unrolling them and have to be a little bit delicate with them because uh, they have gotten waterlogged since being in this water and everything, and uh, you start slowly unraveling one of them, and you can see inside of it, uh. All the ink has smeared and ran, and it looks like it's dripping down the parchment. It's kind of hard to make out anything. Uh, make an investigation roll for me. Oh, that's funny. Uh, it's hard to make out, but the way that there, the wording and everything is arranged on it and organized, you can tell that it's a ledger of sorts. Uh, seems to be maybe indicating... Uh, funds for uh, for gambling purposes. Hmm. Gambling. Chattington, you know a thing or two about gambling. Have a look at these. I mean, don't we all? And these were these were gooses on it, right? Yes. Do you recognize any of these names? And. Uh to him to see if he can make out anybody. Yeah, you can try to make an investigation as well, but as mentioned, the, all the wording on it has really bled and smudged, and it's, it's pretty, think, pretty hard. I, to I, think, I think we may 
want to try to get that larger crate because typically if there's a ledger, there's funds. I got an idea. I got an idea. Do you have that bow with you still? What? A bow? Didn't you have a, a bow uh, and an yeah, arrow? Yeah, I, I do. I do. I think... Do we have some rope? Maybe we can... You guys have rope. That we got rope. Got out of the hole with. We've got attach rope. a little bit of rope to it and see if maybe we can um, put an arrow in the side of the box and pull the box over. Because the ice does look a little creepy. Or, or I mean, we just venture out onto the ice and pray. Oh, I'm not going into that ice. But one thing that we could do to make this rather easy, I could get on top of uh, Cuomo. He can fly me directly over it. And I'll just shoot down. And then he'll fly back over, and then we'll pull it in. I, I look at Fang, and I whisper to him, saying, every now and then, he does have a good idea. That's a good idea, Solrak. And I'm trying to listen, because I'm sure he's going to compliment me, and this is the time. Because you're, and I, you're and a, I, a werewolf. Yep. <laughs> no werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just and I just like inside I'm like oh yeah alright yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll me and Cuomo will uh, take you over there alright so I uh, cheat my swords away and I pull out my oath bow and, uh, and do, you, do you have rope or do you need some rope for me uh, I could use some rope gents gotcha yeah uh, let's see and how far is that Ah, excellent. Got 50 feet. <clears throat> so here, just take all 50 feet and go ahead and tie it off on one of the arrows. So I'm gonna just give you all the rope, so why don't you just add that to your inventory? Perfect. Okay, and then uh, I get on top of Cuomo. And, uh... We do. I fly him. You're just along for the ride and for the arrow. I think I, th I think Cuomo the combination of you two might be too heavy for Cuomo. All right, all right. I'll allow, I'll allow you. So. <laughs> so I get on top of Cuomo and I whisper into his ear. Finally, you get a real cool owner. And then I go hip hip hair. That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suck it. Love it. So uh, you take to the air with Cuomo. Uh, on you're on Cuomo's back. And uh, Cuomo flies on over right above this crack in the ice here. And you have your bow in your hand. What do you do? And uh, we fly right over the box. And then I'm just going to shoot downwards. All right. My, uh, my earth bow. Yeah. Easy enough for you to do as you're right next to it. I'm not going to make you shoot the, or roll to hit. Uh, you, uh, so you guys tied a rope to this, right? Did I miss that? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, you, you shot into the uh, this crate here, right on top. It locks in there. You pull the rope and feel that the arrow's pretty tug in there. And, uh, yeah. And I have Cuomo fly me back over to the ledge s slowly. And uh, drag this thing with me. All right, you begin trying to pull it behind with you, and as you do, Cuomo is like, Whoa! and starts coming down a little bit. Uh, it seems to be a little bit too much weight for you to be uh, pooling with Cuomo. Uh, Cuomo can make a strength saving throw. I'll allow that to see if maybe he's got extra. Can I? Can I give, it, give him? Since I'm holding the the rope myself too, can I give him the help action? I'll allow it. Sure. So would I do a strength? Strong no, no, it's, it's, got, it's got to be Cuomo's, because it's really Cuomo's wow. strength that's pulling all of you guys. Uh, and it seems like the weight of this crate and you uh, on her or on him, damn it, is just too much for uh, him to be able to pull out of the ice here fully. You get it to the edge of the ice. Uh, as you know, it's easier to pull through the, the water as it's buoyant. But, yeah, you're unable to get it much further than that. Okay, so it's over at the ice right now, like over here, like where. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I uh, fly back over with Cuomo and leave it there. 
Oh, hold on, hold, now hold on a second. Uh, just, I'm doing that just so I can talk to you guys. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Cuomo, if if he has 50 feet of rope attached, the crate's here. That means he's here. So Solrak, you hop off Cuomo, and why doesn't Cuomo try to pull it himself at this point? He can do that. Yeah, Cuomo. Let's see how you're feeling. Uh, I know you had some uh, some a lot of weight on you from Solrak sitting on you. Try pulling it now. And I'm going to grab the rope from the back, too, and try to pull as well. All right, both of you guys can make a strength check. Because you're pulling uh, this crate across the ice oh, now. 17. Uh, very nice. Cuomo is uh, starting to dig his uh, talons into the, the ground right there and uh, starting to backpedal a little bit. And you guys see the crate pulling up. Ooh, 21. And uh, Solrax starts digging in, too. I mean, it's like it's tug-of-war, and we all know Solrax the tug-of-war champ. And he starts uh, digging in and yeah. grunting and pulling, and you guys see the crate start sliding across this ice here. You hear a, <laughs> a crack in the ice. And you guys keep on pulling it and pulling it, and are able to get the crate all the way across to your side. Yeah! Nice all right, Solrak, you know what you need to do for this crate. I go to smash it open. I uh, go to smash it on open. And go ahead and do a, a uh, athletics. athletics Ooh, yeah. Try to... Oh, yeah. You uh, hit it, the top of the crate just kind of cracks, and you're able to rip off all the lid. And inside of it, you see neatly arranged in there with a uh, kind of cushion around the side of it and the bottom of it and the top of the lid. Um, looks like probably a thousand silver pieces altogether. <laughs> well, well, Chattington, uh, it looks like you were right. I told you. There's always money. Well, why don't we uh, divvy these up? I think for uh, weight encumbrance purposes, it, let, let's just know that we all get a third of this, but I think we should just throw it in the bag of holding if there's space. Because yeah. a th a 333 silver pieces is just, it's just, we're just adding on to the already uh, significant weight that we're already pulling. That's smart thinking. I will do that. So, 1,000 SP. And, and I, hopefully... and I, so like, hold on, did, did we like count it? No, so it's like they're arranged in, uh, there's 25, or there's, uh, you know, the amount of rows that there are and coins in each row, you guys were able to count that there's, a, you know, if you did the quick multiplication, there's a 40 by 25? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep, I, I yep, just said 25, I was trying to figure out what the other one was. <laughs> yep. Sorry, go. All right, gentlemen, 900 silver pieces in the bag of holding. You know we kind of do with you, Chattington. But uh, enough of that. Once we get to a place, let's let's try and uh, exchange some of this, uh, some of our coins for, like I don't know, some was it platinum, some platinum pieces or diamond. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, right. We just, I we just, we just we all just... buy some really cool shit. I would like matching yeah, belt. Yeah. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's and. I mean, I guess this is where we need to be uh, to get to where we go next, but I don't feel so comfortable walking along this uh, this ice right here. Let's maybe we walk along the uh, sh shore to see if we can find an opening, or should we risk it? Uh, I'm with you. I'm thinking it might be worth uh, you sending the bird up to see if you can find one before we uh, track through. Or actually, you know, you just made me think of a good idea. I fly over there to the uh, to the water with the bird, throw down the boat, and then he makes his runs, bringing you guys from the shore to the to the boat. Ooh, there you go. That's a great idea. Let's do Instead it. Instead of having to waste time finding an opening, so let's go ahead and do that. Cuomo, hip hip. Cuomo takes to the sky uh, with you on his back. Yep, and we're gonna head like right there, but in the water. Uh, mark it again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or, or just yeah, Cuomo there. there. Yeah. There okay. Go. Perfect. But yeah, but we're gonna be in the water, so like right there. Okay. Not if you see where I put Cuomo. 
I'll put sure myself do. there too. Sure do. Yep. And uh, you're going to now. So I, I pull out the uh, I pull out the box that is the uh, folding ship, and say uh, Rampu, and we're gonna the folding boat is going to be the uh, the 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 largest size of the uh, three options. Yeah, there, there's two boat size options, and then the third option is to put it back into the box. But yeah, so you go ahead and make it the largest boat. You, you say the command word after you pull out this uh, wooden box. And uh, at, in your hands, you push the little button after saying the command word, and it starts a little flap pops open, and a uh, roll unravels inside of it. And then popping out of your hand and floating into the water right underneath of you is this 20 foot long, 8 foot by 8 foot vessel. Uh, with a Amazing. sail on the top of it, uh, three sets of oars, and a steering uh, oar in the front of it. It's very nice. Now, Cuomo, just all you gotta do is get the rest of the gang, and then we. Bye, right, buddy. Can I see the boat from my end? You can. All right, then we can chat it to you. Oh, that thing is pretty sweet, huh? That is a sweet rod indeed. So one of us can drive it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I know how to sail. <laughs> yeah, you didn't take that background. <laughs> You're folk hi hero, not a sailor or pirate. <laughs> <laughs> a failure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Cuomo goes, flies back over, uh, and lands on the ground, shakes off some of the snow on him, and looks over at you guys. Well, let's hop on up. I mean, I, we could probably both do it together. Well, uh, you and Quom, you and uh, Brutus should go, and then I'll go. Oh yeah. Silence, we get Brutus. Hey, Wilmore or Solrak, you toss Brutus on top of Cuomo. Uh, Will, you, then you toss Wilmore on top of it on Cuomo, and uh, Cuomo takes flight over towards the boat. And uh, I keep a watch out in case anybody's going to come at me. I'm alone. All right. And uh, Cuomo flies on over swiftly and gently and drops Wilmore and Brutus off at the boat. And I'm putting my earth bow away and I'm pulling out my swords, my regular swords. All right. Uh, Cuomo drops them off. Solrak, over your shoulder, you hear some footsteps approaching. Uh, I, uh... You look over your shoulder and there's nothing there. I, uh, try to hide out a little bit by this tree, and then I smell to see if I smell someone near me. You make a perception with advantage. Oh, that's a nat 20, baby. Cool. Uh, yeah, you, you don't smell any body near you, but maybe there's some sort of beast nearby. I uh, try to keep an eye out for Cuomo, but I ready up my swords for an attack. Cuomo begins flying back over in your direction after dropping off Wilmore, and uh, Brutus gets about 20 feet away from you, Solrak, as you look back over your shoulder. Still nothing in sight. Cuomo drops back down to the ground in front of you. Alright, then I get on top of Cuomo. I say, make it quick. Let's get the fuck out of here, yeah. <laughs> you hop on Cuomo, and Cuomo takes to the air real quick. And keeping it, your head on a swivel and your eyes looking behind you. You don't seem to see any, uh, any beast in the bushes or anything making that noise. Do you make a perception check as you're flying away? Twelve. Yeah. As you're flying away and you're just about to get down onto the boot, you think you see a, a tree about 50 yards back off the path Sh shake a bit. Uh, I, uh, I point to the tree with my sword and say, I think we're being followed here. Hmm. 
Hide that damn Zantarum again. Chaddington using that invisible ring constantly. They're on oh, us. Yeah. I haven't used it in quite some time. Yesterday. This was, this was not any normal creature. You can no. feel that it was there, but I couldn't see it. Well then, let's start Solid. fucking paddling then. Smart move. Everyone Did grab I... an oar. I oar it up. I oar up. You guys oar it up quickly. Just begin grabbing uh, a paddle each and begin to start moving yeah. off the shore and pushing as far away as you can. Still rack your eyes, looking back behind you off the shore to see if you can spot anything. Don't seem to see anything else as you guys drift away off to sea, leaving the land behind you. And as I uh, drive off, I try to picture in my memories just what the hell that thing was that was following us. It was following me. Oh, look at us moving! Whoa, we're <laughs> I love this. Moving. You guys like this? Oh yeah. So cool. It didn't take <laughs> me too long to make. Hell yeah. It's so cool. I was like, I can need to make a uh, map for the sea moving ice, and I made it. And I was like, wait, what if I made it moving though? So it looks like they're constantly sailing. I was like, alright, yeah, made I this? yeah, I made this. Fucking oh, sideways. <laughs> you guys get for having a professional designer be your DM. Right? <laughs> Name Moonlight. That's right. Don't forget it. So you guys take to the sea, leaving the, the coast behind you. Uh, Icewind Dale, the Sword Coast, the Great North, and you guys are now in the wide open sea. It is the early evening with the stars twinkling in the sky. Uh, a near full moon it's coming off the full moon phase so you guys know it's 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 waning right now to a crescent moon and it's uh, glowing in the sky leading your way um you guys see bits of ice floating by you uh glacial bits you know large bits some of them is as large as your boat some small and tiny fractured off into pieces uh see bits of wood and debris just floating on by um but as you guys are out here on the the open sea Underneath the moonlight and the stars, it's serene. It's a, it's a nice, quiet, nice feeling. I take this moment. Uh, actually, Cuomo, why don't you uh, sit on top of the uh, sail just to keep an eye out for everything? And we're, we're continuously paddling, correct? Uh. Yeah, you guys are paddling. I mean, you guys can continuously paddle. There is a light wind, you know, at your guys' uh, uh, benefit right now that will help push you just slightly, but you guys aren't going much faster than uh, two miles per hour right now. Well, well in that case, uh, I'm going to, uh, since I took my demon sword away, I'm going to tune to it again while I... Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. When, if you're not unattuning, like, just because you're putting it away doesn't mean you need to unattune to it, so you're fine. Cool. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. I'm just totally not paddling since we have a <laughs> Well, it. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, there is, um, I forgot to mention this as well, there is a small cabin on the back of the boat as well. Just has one uh, fold out bed in there. Seems to have just, you know, as Fang popped up this box, everything started animating and popping up and uh, put itself in position and it popped up these little wall on the back here there's a uh, not a roof or there's a small roof for it but a small sunlight as well and then uh, just a small bed in there with a couple of extra paddles for you all and in the front there there's the uh, steering oar and an anchor attached to a rope gents well, should we, should we uh, take this time to kind of figure out what's the uh, what's the game plan for once we get to where we're going do we have a set list of things that we're trying to accomplish in a set order? Well, I believe the plan is get to Svardvorg, get on the throne, mm -hmm. and maybe find some sort of conch 
apparently. Apparently we're we're real big on large shells and make noises in this area. <laughs> so that's that, that's the plan. Maybe maybe kill, maybe maim, maybe pillage, I don't know, but we'll see. Any anybody have any idea what we're getting into though? <laughs> I guess we'll figure that out once we get there. That's right. I mean, all I know is that, or all we know is that, where we're heading, there are uh, giants. So, Sorak, big man over there, just keep staying on your A game. I'll do my best to keep fighting and kill you guys as best I can. And I'll take care of all the real work. Right. So yeah, as, right. You, as you guys are discussing yeah. this, uh, in you know, Wilmore, you bring up that the conch is on the throne, and Svardborg being like the frost giant's like stronghold. Maybe you guys like you know try to develop a plan or something. Hmm. Well, I, I guess the first question is, when we get there, do y'all think they're gonna be friendly? Well, we can we can certainly try, but I think at the end of the day we always gotta be you know expect the best but prepare for the worst. So what's the worst? Let's see. They the try worst? and destroy us. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody's gonna do any destroying around here, <clears throat> it's gonna be me here. So the worst would be we get to the Frost Giant stronghold and they're there, thousand of them, and they try to kill us. That would be tough. That would be pretty bad, I think. Should should we should we go in stealthily? Or should we maybe like ooh, or or maybe Fang, you sit on Solrek's shoulders, I sit on your shoulders, and we pretend to be a giant. Anyone think that would work? Maybe we're like a lost yeah, frost right. giant coming home. Just wear a giant suit too. Stand on top of each other. That is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> well, what's your idea? Well, my idea is we try to sneak through. And then we hope for the best. Now, keep well, in mind, guys. We do have this, uh, the leather insignia that we acquired from the, uh, deformed frost giant troll thing, uh, whatever we fucked up twice. That is, let's keep in mind that that is the same insignia, um, as Jarl in Svartborg. So I think we use that as our, uh, advantage. Maybe we're, uh, acquainted with, uh, maybe this crew. Cause you are that that's the throne that we are trying yeah. to get to. You don't think they'd think we killed someone and took it? <laughs> well again, there's only one way to find out. I'd say yeah. the last conversations we're gonna have better will be. I mean I do think that's gonna help, but Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean, I still like fake big giant, but I, I I understand that's not a favorite in this crowd. Well, maybe they know your your giant buddy. So I pull out the rock and I, Harshi. Silence. Speaking to a rock again. And I miss Harshi. He, see, he sounds like he was I a don't guy. necessarily think he was a friend of them. You don't think so? I don't think so, maybe. But I don't think we should count on it. I, I, I think we go in under the radar. I, I, I like the idea of sneaking in. Sneaking into the throne, maybe? And trying to steal this bad boy? Yeah. Look, uh, file seems like the best idea. Try to get a layout of the land. That would be good. Because ideally, we could sneak through, but otherwise, 
Perhaps one of us can set a distraction, if need be, so the others can get away. Chattington's usually pretty good with that. I can try. Just know that. If we go into the stronghold, we might not all make it out alive here. Are you both okay with that? We gotta do what we gotta do to uh, stop the fire giants. And then I take this moment to think about my dad, who I miss dearly. After the uh, fire giants absolutely destroyed our village and killed him. And I look over at Chattington. Are you okay with that? Well, personally, I would really like not to die here. Not gonna lie. And that's my stance. Well, I guess we'll have to try not to die then. <laughs> Another thing, guys, another thing, guys, is, um, remember, uh, upon approaching Bryn Shandir, the, uh, the Frost Giants were looking for, uh, Artis Simber. Um, I'm wondering if that might help with, uh, anything as well. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just trying to get the gears turning, and I'm just spitballing. Maybe that'll help us with something. What were they looking for with him, with Art December? Let's see. We kind of believe he may have had, or the uh, little ring blue evil winter. had something to do with. Yes. Yes, the Ring of Winter. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we dress you up like him? Yeah. Although and I don't I'm know what he looks like. And I'm the one with the bad ideas, so wreck. He's a uh, artist Simber. He's the father of the Sirag at the Temple of the Thunder. And he has a ring that can cast everlasting winter and winter in him immortal. Hmm. So, this that is what I remember about him. We would find his ring. Fuck these people up here. Something tells me it's not gonna be over here. Are you friend. Hmm. As you guys are discussing this and trying to uh, converse and think of a plan as you guys approach Svartborg and what to do as you guys get there. You see a, a single beacon in the distance slowly appro approaching you in the darkness of the of the night. You said it's approaching us? It's, it's heading in your direction, I should say, rather. It's not like quite near you yet, but you see a single beacon. It's kind of hovering above the water because you can't make out what's underneath of it or anything, and uh, just kind of floating in your guys' direction. Is it coming towards us, or are we going towards it? What's the difference? I guess it's stationary. Um, make a perception check. Um, yeah, you can tell that it seems to be slowly drifting in your guys' direction as you guys are slowly drifting in its direction. Let's uh, uh, try to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I start turning the oar. Start turning the front oar? Yep. Alright. Um, Start turning and uh, trying to s steer out of the direction of uh, the way that this beacon is heading in your direction. And, uh, yeah, you see it's, it keeps on, you know, maintaining a straight line, kind of going in the path that it was going. And it notices, uh, of course, uh, another boat in the distance and starts veering off, kind of slowly drifting up to catch up in line with you all. Uh, try steering the other way. 
Gentlemen, I think we're had. Well, whoever they are, it's, you don't know if they're friend or foe, so... 500 yards away now, just approaching, ever so slowly. And as it gets closer, and through the mist of the night and darkness, you can see a, a single small vessel approach out of the mist. Small, yeah. Smaller vessel than yours. Gentlemen, I, I think whatever happens, we keep our mission hush-hush. That's right. I, uh, I uh, put my swords away for now, and I take my bow and arrow back out, and, my, uh, uh, and I aim it at that, just in case it's something not friendly. All right. You uh, get yourself ready, and you put your swords away, and about 100 yards now, this boat is approaching you all. And you can see just a single man, just a shorter man, perhaps dwarven or halfling, uh, steering this boat, and he's waving in your direction. And I have my own boat literally winded, and I'm aiming at him to say... Identify yourself here. The boat slowly keeps on drifting up towards you all. And uh, you hear the man yell out, Whoa, whoa, whoa! I mean no harm! How do I know? Um, you, you see him frantically move over. Uh, I, I guess you don't, uh, but uh, <laughs> you, you, I, uh, trust me. <laughs> Maybe. Trust so rack he is. He is by himself, it seems. And I uh, begrudgingly lower slowly my weapon, but I keep my eyes on the stranger. Alright, yeah, you keep your eyes on the stranger as his boat approaches. And he has his hands up, and as he gets a little bit closer, you see him uh, put his hands down towards the wheel and hit a, a lever. It seems to slow him down a bit. And he gets a little bit closer. Uh, you can notice that he has like a, a small like tiki bar on his boat and it's got like little like lanterns on it all uh, nicely lit with like little green glowing orbs and everything uh, and he looks at you and is like uh, I promise I mean you no harm you can put that down huh. we'll see about that then I put away my oath bow and take my swords back out ah jeez uh, if you guys aren't thirsty I'll just I'll keep on going Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not make any rash decision, friend. Uh, who's making the rash decisions? Uh, you're the one wielding two swords, uh, just a, a lonely old dwarf floating off the sea. Uh, yes, because it's quite often you stumble into some old dwarf floating out by himself in the middle of this creepy sea of moving ice hair. It's not every day that you meet uh, the owner of the bearded clam. The first and only floating sea vessel bar of all of the floating I sea of floating ice. I'm not a drinker, but that's a pretty cool idea. Uh, thank you. I, this is the first one of its kind. I thought so myself. How you get a lot of business, business out, here? out here? Yeah. Yeah. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could say it's quite stiff. <laughs> well, that's probably because you're the bearded player. That's but... right. <laughs> you get it. You get it. <laughs> Uh, what do you got on board? Uh, you guys like oyster shooters? Okay. I'll take the oyster, but hold the shooter. Oh, I hate oyster shooters. It's the one thing I despise. <laughs> oh, man. I guess you're going <laughs> to hate the beard of clam because we have oyster shooters in ten different varieties. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, ten different varieties. I guess I'm going to try all of those. Hey, you want to try one? We have one that's a little bit salty, one that's a little bit more briny, one with, made with a dark ale, one with, made with a light ale. It's good stuff. Yeah. What's, what's the difference between salty and briny? <laughs> People can't tell the difference. I can tell the difference. One's a little bit, like, it gives you a little bite on your tongue. The other one's got a little bit of, woo, on your tongue. I'll go for uh, salty hair. I do like woo. Oh, you, got, you want the brine, all right. You I back there? Salt. He's, you see him start chucking some oysters in front of him and starts tossing some shakers around and whatnot. Yeah, do you have a, uh... Hmm. 
Yeah, you know what? That, that briny one sounds pretty good. Oh, it's a great one. It's one of my best sellers. Uh, yeah, again, no no uh, alcohol to go along with that, please. I'll Just take his it. alcohol, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's fine. You guys you know, not? Sailors? I uh, thought all sailors drink. No. He's, a, he's a special sailor. Yeah. Ah, you know. See. Ah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, I, I'll I'll get that ready for you. Does he need a fork and a bib and everything too? Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. Said, absolutely, he does. All right, well, all right I got gotcha. you. You see, he, he pulls out a bib that has a, a, a bearded clam on it with a smiling face, and he's all right. Let's go get you. And he starts leaning over the boat and tries to uh, wrap it around your neck and tie it for you. I just kind of sit there like. Kinda, kinda we like got you, over. buddy. We got you. And he pets his head. Smooth, and Don't smooth. bite him if he uh, decides to have his on his knees. Right, what he does. Yeah. All right, well, fellas, uh, let me get one for myself, too. And he hands all you guys your, your shooters, and he gets one ready for himself. Bottoms up. Here's Bottoms the love. Up. Here's the honor. And even though I uh, said I trusted him, I watched him have his first. Oh, he, kick, he kicks it back instantly. All right. I, I um, cast minor illusion in my hand for a shot. So I put the shot in my other hand, take the fake one, and then put the other one in my pocket. <laughs> you wouldn't have you wouldn't happen to have any mini net sauce to go along with the uh, oysters, would you? Pardon me. That's okay. Don't worry about it. As I slurp them down real quick. What's your name, by the way, buddy? Ah, uh, they call me Greasy. Greasy, 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 greasy. Oh, yeah. Why here? What, what what exactly is out here anyway? You see him just kind of kick back and look up at the stars in the sky. Exactly. What's out of here? It's quite peaceful. It's quite nice. And, uh, you know, if I make a buck every now and then, getting oysters out of the water for free, it's worth it for me. Not a bad little gig you have. Now, where'd you come from? You wouldn't have happened to come from the Svardborg area, would you? Svardborg? Hmm. No, nah, absolutely not. A little uh, dwarf like me around there? Mm-mm, one last. Why do you say that? Wolf, uh, you, you go hang around at uh, Giant Strongholds yourself? You know, Fortress of Giants? I don't think, uh, you know, they don't want nobody in there. Hmm. That's fair. Is, uh, is there a way in at all that you would know? Oh, well, Svardberg is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a piece of glacier out in the ocean. Uh, circular. It's got a nice little harbor in the center, but all the buildings, you know, situated around the the outside of the ring. Hmm. So I, uh, you pick and choose your own way. Is you said there's a central harbor inside the glacier? Oh yeah, yeah. That's where the uh, the frost giants they got a big old ship, uh, the Krigvind. They park that baby in there. Hmm. And there's a way into that harbor from outside the glacier. I assume correct. Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, yeah, they, get, they actually have a... It's cool. They have, like, a, a chain system that blocks the harbor so that, uh, you know, no boats can go on in there, and then they lower down the chain so the big boats can get on in. That's good to know. Yeah. You guys want another round? Sure. You know, How yeah. How much uh, do we owe you for these, by the way? Oh, uh, you know, just uh, five silvers. Five for everything? Silver. Yeah, for everything. Uh, wow. The ocean provides uh, me the, my bounty of all I need. Except for the liquor. I give, yeah. I, I give him two gold pieces and say, yeah, keep the change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like a month's worth of work. Thank you. Yeah, I like you, buddy. I like the uh, the business concept. Oysters are good. Fresh. Here, I'll also give you two gold pieces. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, you yeah, know, if, if you... Uh, Guys, uh, need anything else? Any uh, any other shots? You want any uh, just some, some food maybe? No, oh, you want another shot? Yeah, buddy. And then All I right. Also do some food. I was say we got some ceviche if you want some. Uh, you know, it's got a little bit of squid, a little bit of mussel, a little bit of clam, a little bit of you know all all, all your favorite mollusk in there. Ha! <laughs> Sold. All right. Take two all more right. of those oysters, please. You got Seems it. Like you, see him, you see him just cracking away at the oysters and shucking them. Uh, you guys can feel free to spark up another conversation with if you want, but he's just sucking away and getting everything ready for you. you have uh, you had any, any any other clients recently, my friend? Um, nah, you know, it's been about um, at least two ten days. 
It's been, been quite quite some time. I saw you guys floating out down here. I couldn't get to you quick enough. That is true. You did you did go pretty quickly. I tried. With, with the uh, with the gold that we gave you, maybe invest in a sign. You know, you kind of snuck up on us with that uh, beacon. Yeah, I almost <laughs> killed you. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time, that you know. That would have been funny. I've come across some pirates in my day, and uh, they've seen me, and I offer up my shots and my oysters, and they don't want to raid me. They're like, hey, he's giving us stuff. Uh, why would I hurt him? So, you know, I feel like killing with kindness, right? That's fair. Like That's that. fair. I like that. Yeah, I used yeah. to have a sword named Kindness. Killed a lot of men. You know that goes. That's a great name for a sword. I wish that was a true story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he gets uh, the, all the oyster shooters ready for you guys and passes your way and some of the the uh, cocktail, raw seafood cocktail that he has and everything and uh, serves you guys on up. But gentlemen, uh, it's been great. Great seeing you out here. Uh, you guys are going to be floating around for a little while? We're going to keep heading this way. Keep heading this way. See what way. happens. And uh, where to after this? Uh, who uh, knows? We'll see where the sea of moving ice moves us. <laughs> uh -huh. That's my motto. Well, just see where we drift along. Yep. Oh. See him uh, wipe some of the clam juice off his beard and mustache and everything. Guys, uh, all right. If that's uh, all that you need for tonight, we'll, um, well, happy sailing to you, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you on the flippy floppy. On the flippy flaps, my friend. Thanks for the hospitality in the middle of this uh, this water here. Ah, uh, certainly. Uh, be safe as well. Uh, and watch out for certain beast. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh. Certain beast. Fair to elaborate. Oh, uh, you know, uh, the ocean's full of all sorts of dangerous monsters and beasts. Uh, but um, you guys are sailors, I'm sure you know that already. I mean, oh, we're uh... not too familiar with this area. I mean, yeah, yeah, we're sailors, all right. But I mean, which which beast should we kind of be looking out for? Any signs? Um, you know, perhaps something that might be invisible. Um, hmm. okay. You know, there are some sort of elementals that can turn themselves in invisible, but uh, you know, you'd be pretty hard to find one out here. Uh, but you know, outside of that. Yeah, you your your normal stuff. Uh, drowners who come up here and they try to slash your boat and try to pull you down. And if you're swimming, they try to get you in and make you so that you drown with them and they can feast on you. Uh, sorts of things like that. There's uh, of course uh, you gotta watch out for the singing. Uh, yeah, you know if there's singing out here in the water, they they're gonna they're gonna get you and charm you. Um, there's of course you know swimming things like uh, sharks and you know things like that too. It's good to know. Like I said, we're not too familiar with this area, uh, so we'll be sure to keep a lookout for all that. Absolutely. Well, well guys, we must. Be, yep, we must be getting on. He grabs but his, it was a pleasure. Grabs his oars and starts paddling away. It looks up that little latch that has him like parked there. Uh, likewise to you all, and uh, be safe out there. All right. Um, if you're going to Svardborg, be safe. I see him just keep Thank on paddling you. away. Aye. And I start crushing my ceviche. <laughs> <laughs> ceviche well, tastes then. kind of old. I I didn't need <laughs> any a of that. Just old. Just to point uh, that. <laughs> the uh, oyster shooters, they tasted good. Uh, especially with the taste of the liquor masking most of the oysters. But ceviche tastes like it's a little old. <laughs> so I just have a bite. And I go, that son of a bitch. I shouldn't have given him two gold pieces. <laughs> just... <laughs> And I just throw it overboard. But you, and, uh, you took, you uh, took an oyster that'll... shot, though? Or you took two oyster yep. shots? Yep. Uh, you, you can get two health back. Woo! What about the four oysters I ate? They had no booze. It was, it was the remedy of the booze. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I used to be an alcoholic in this game. No. Yeah, buddy. My life belongs to the monastery. I refuse to drink. <laughs> All right. You just only rob people. That's a <laughs> rules are rules. So uh, he floats on by, sailing in the opposite direction as you all. And uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty late in the evening now. 
your boat seems to just be slowly drifting away, uh, floating on by as it's just a light wind and uh, you guys aren't currently paddling. Um, what would you guys like to do? I'm gonna look at the stars now. Absolutely. Start trying to study them. Yeah, you can go ahead and do a let's do a nature check for that or survival. I'll let you do pick your call on that because survival is like trailing things. Nature, of course, innate. Nature. Survival supposed to so I gotta go with that. Sure. And that's a 19. Okay, yeah. Uh, so you're tracking the relative positions of the stars in the night sky currently, and uh, the moon. And yeah, you know that's about three days now past the full moon phase, and you guys are you know coming out of that, and you can see that the the moon is starting to wane and uh, become a, a new moon. You know, sometime you'd imagine within the next 15 days or so. Um, but yeah, you're watching the, the position of the stars in the sky. You can see one glowing bright, uh, you know, kind of near what looks like another light that seems to be just like flashing up there. And uh, as you recall back into uh, your youth and things that you've learned, you know that to be uh, the guiding star. And that's a star that you can use to follow on your path to keep in the northern direction. And, uh, yeah, you see the positions of the stars in the sky, and you can kind of mark that for now, and you'll, you'll come back to it later uh, when you check it out, you know, in future days. Yep. Wilmore, is there anything that you do? Just kind of looking at the water, seeing if there's anything kind of swimming underneath of us, or... Just kind of listening out, just kind of relaxing and enjoying the peacefulness for a change. Absolutely. You can make a perception check for me. Just kind of kicking back on one of these benches, I'm just slowly drifting by, feeling the yeah. breeze in the air. And uh, you decide to peek on down to the water and uh, look into the depths of the blue below you. And you see, as you look on down. <laughs> Well, you. <laughs> you, see, you see as you look on down, a school of knucklehead trout swimming in the depths below the ship. Ooh. There's some trout down there if y'all want to catch some dinner. Ooh, oh. this ceviche was crap. Knucklehead <laughs> trout. Oh, boy, do I miss that at Bryn Shander. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how we'd eat it. We probably wouldn't be able to cook it here, but uh, just as good raw. I mean, it, you don't get much fresher than that. That's hmm. right. How much? How big are knucklehead trout? Uh, they're bigger than you. Uh, <laughs> and the the average. I mean, like like lengthwise at least. The average like male will say is like fifty pounds. Ooh. Ooh. Know how to get these guys, gentlemen? <laughs> um, like, like thirty to fifty pounds would be an average male. Well, Solrek, you still have that uh, arrow and rope rig that you made for the uh, for the crates. I do, but hitting a hitting one of those in the water might be tough. Well, it's easy. You, you just sure gotta, try. based off the reflection of the water and the distance below the surface of the water, you just gotta aim slightly below do the angle. And then I flexion. roll my eyes over at Channington. Sounds like, uh, sounds like you got a bull over here on board, because I'm hearing a lot of bullshit landing on deck. It's physics. <laughs> or, or, hear me out now, guys. I just shoot Eldrick Blast into the water. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, sh shoot, uh, let's see, do, yeah, do an Eldritch Blast, do it with disadvantage, though. <laughs> Eleven. Ugh. Um, yeah, you, you shoot out an Eldritch Blast, go ahead and roll me a d20. Roll a d100. Huh. 
<laughs> yeah, this thing. It's juicy. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> We're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> the third explodes. <laughs> Ray Lewis, baby. Yeah. You shoot down Eldritch Blast. He psh, killed the trout. It, towards the knucklehead <laughs> trout. And as the Allegedly. Eldritch, as the, your swirling purple and yellow red energy of your Eldritch Blast psh, blasts and connects with the water, you see <laughs> starts swirling around in the water. The starry, spirally pit looks like a portal has split open in the water right there. <laughs> what have you done, Shadow Dead? <laughs> a a uh, ten foot uh, wide circle, uh, circular por portal has appeared there. Oh, shit. And you watch really? as one of the knucklehead trout s swimming around and dives through the hole and. <laughs> disappears, gets sucked through this vortex and, like, stars and, like, swirls like, like popping out of it and stuff, and uh, that fish is gone. What does the, uh, vortex like, I mean, can you see through it at all? Like, other than, like, stars and shit, vortex. is it, like, is there anything else to it? Yeah, the, uh, go ahead and make a perception check. It's like my fourth three, six. Eighteen for sort of like a. Uh, Solrax doing it too. Good. Yeah, you can do it too if you want. Fuck it. Sure. Trying to look through. See if it's like the one that we did last time. At, I came out of and got attacked by birds. You're right. So. <laughs> I'm wary of. Um. <laughs> let's see. Who? Wilmore, you notice. Smoke starts like black, shadowy smoke starts like tenderly s swirling its way out of it, <sighs> just like wisping up into the air. Well, gentlemen, I think they went down to meet the Balrog. <laughs> so, uh, we'll butter him up next time he comes around, giving him some knucklehead trout. Yeah, that's what it was for. I, I hope he does a good hold. On. I just, just. Just give me one second over here. I'm, I'm gonna go over to the side of the ship. And I'm gonna um. I'm gonna like poop in my hand and throw <laughs> it into the uh, to the vortex. <laughs> I'm just watching him disgusted. Well, more. And then, in all and then I go. And then I, go. I have never <laughs> seen something so foul and disgusting. What the hell is wrong with you? Please I, wash I, your hands. I go, gentlemen, gentlemen. This is my pittance for the master. And then I and then I just slowly wash my hands in, in, in the water. And I go. I hope he liked it. You throw the poop, the poopy. You throw it in the <laughs> hole, <laughs> and and. It swirls down the spirally of this vortex, and black smoke starts wafting up out of it. And after you do that, you start hearing a bzzz. What have you done now, Chattington? I this think he liked it. This droning, buzzing sound. Sounds like he liked it today. Sounds like he liked it. He's he's whistling. Should I do it again? You. Oh! Anger or something. <laughs> Alright. And you're watching the hole, and as your guys are intently watching this, you see, start moving out of it, a <gasps> needle point starts emerging out of the this vortex, out of the center of it. This black needle point that's, you know, tapered at the end and extends out, getting wider and wider at the base about three feet long starts pointing its way out of it and that droning buzzing sound continues Gads, I think we need to row away from this thing I'd right agree now. with that and I start take an oar and start rowing yep I, I pick up the other oar and start rowing as well and out of the hole you guys see this winged humanoid looking uh, creature with this needle point nose out of it just flies out of the hole and starts buzzing, droning in your direction. I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw. God damn, you son of a bitch. Ooh, 25. 
Seven. Oh. <laughs> Fourteen. Rest, rest in peace, Wilmore. <laughs> uh, Wilmore, this creature flies out of the hole and is buzzing, <clears throat> looking right in your direction, pointing its needle nose uh, towards you. And this droning noise just starts driving you insane as it reverberates throughout the uh, chambers of your your head, and you just feel this swirling sensation as you fall down to the ground and pa- pass out backwards. Uh, Wilmore is, falls backwards unconscious. Does that put the creature within five feet of me at all, or not? Uh, he is within uh, like ten feet of you, but that's not an attack. Okay, that's not okay. Uh, Wilmore is currently unconscious, passed out on the deck, as this flying creature Wilmore buzzes its way up, and I'm gonna add you all to the combat tracker. Even Wilmore. <laughs> Even Wilmore. Even. Uh, yes. Let me go ahead and put on some music. Uh, the you gonna redo everybody, or I'm still 21. Yeah, you uh, redo. Of course. Ten. Still. Twenty-three. Let me make a new encounter real quick. Oh, Wilmore, you dirty dog, you. <laughs> Making an abyssal creature fly out of the ocean. All right, all these knucklehead trout are gone. By the way, Ooh. whoops! Did I just Damn delete it. someone? Oh, uh, you deleted uh. Brutus. Brutus. Do you know what his initiative was? <laughs> <Just that. laughs> it was low. He was below soul rack, so I don't know. What it was. <laughs> okay, cool. Add the combat tracker. So he can, we'll give him a nine then. All right, Wilmore, you are unconscious, laying here on uh, the deck, and let me give. Let's see. Creature can you try Hey, you're just unconscious. All right, so it's his turn now. <laughs> uh, can, can um sanity? Go yeah, good. Like, sanity can. Like yeah. my leg. Absolutely. To try to wake me up. Uh, yep. Let's see. Yeah, so sanity tries to wake you up. Starts pecking at you. Doesn't seem to wake you up at all, though. Um. Okay. It's now this creature's turn. It sees Wilmore down on the ground, unconscious, and it takes its needle nose. Starts bzzz, flying in its direction. Um. And he's going to peck down at him and try to hit Wilmore with its nose, its spiky nose. Uh, twenty to hit. That hits. And I can't do a reaction or anything, right? No, like, and uh, and this is a crit technically because he's within five feet of you and you're unconscious. Uh, can I send oh, to Noah now because it's uh, within five feet of me? You're not within five feet of Wilmore. Um, I thought that didn't matter though. I thought I had to be within the five feet of the creature. Uh, but you're you're not within range of the creature either. I'm five feet away from it. It's just the boat is teeny. No, you're fifteen feet away from it. 15? Yeah. Uh, Wilmore, you take... Oh, sorry. Yeah, the one was being blocked. 30 piercing damage. Holy shit. Plus 25 necrotic. I tried, Wilmore. <laughs> oh tried. my oh, god. And it's Brutus' turn now. Yeah, uh, Brutus hears this creature buzzing in its uh, direction. And he's got to make a constitute. Oops, I just deleted him again. He's got to make a cons. <laughs> oh no, it's not his turn. You killed him. He's last. He, he's last, anyways. Yeah, yeah it's uh, Fang's turn. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I I, I, I look at I look at the creature, and I command it to. Uh, Lee. Oh yeah, and Wilmore, your hit point maximum is reduced by 25. Oof. As it sucks that life force out of you through its needle nose. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm gonna 
Yeah, so I'm going to command it to grovel. So that'll be a DC... Uh, wisdom DC 15. Okay. Uh, you shout out a command to the creature to grovel, and that means to fall prone, right? Yeah. Uh, this creature hears you, it turns its head, buzzing in your direction. Well, first I need you to make a constitution save through. I'm sorry, before you do anything. As you hear that droning, buzzing sound. Oh my god, that's a five. And Fang, you're looking at him with intent, ready to speak your uh, your uh, suggestion at him, and you hear that droning sound, it just drives you nuts, and you fall to the ground unconscious. Holy shit. Fang is up, or Quim is up now. I love the bad lore thing. Cuomo it's so fun. is <laughs> Cuomo is going to He's gonna like squaw at me that try and not or allow me to regain consciousness. Um, okay. He squawks at you, uh, trying to wake you up. He sees his, his master down on the ground and trying to just do everything he can to wake you up, and squawks go unheard by you. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Wilmore, you, you wake up, by the way, after he did that damage to you. Is that technically an action? What's that? Cuomo's? Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let it be a free action. Sure, you can do it something else. But, okay. but he actually needs to make constitution saving throw anyways. I keep forgetting to say that. I guess he's within range. Yes. Alright. Eleven plus... Let's see, does he get anything for con? So, twelve. Twelve. <laughs> uh, Cuomo just... Fights through that droning sound and makes its way over to you to try to wake you up, but does so unsuccessfully. Let him do one more thing. Not a multi attack if you want to do an attack, just one. That's fine. Uh, he'll go with the, uh, he'll go like for uh, the claws at, uh, he's gonna try and claw at the eyes. Of go for it. Are you guys fine to run until 11 30? Yeah. All right, okay, yeah, cool. That's cool with me. Cool. Uh, 15. Uh, 15 to hit. Yeah. Just hits. Yo ho! Let's go, Cuomo. Eleven. Very nice. Cuomo does eleven damage. Uh, pecking into the eye. You hear the droning noise, or I guess you don't, but Cuomo hears that droning noise as it gets closer. Uh, pecks into the eye, and definitely, uh, creature shrieks out in pain. Uh, looks over back in the direction and like, kind of pecks in his direction. Uh, Solrak, your turn. All right, so the droning noise stopped, correct? No, uh, Constitution saving throw for you. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch! It's uh, it's constant. Okay. Let's do that first and before anything. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. All right. Oh yeah, twenty-two, bitch. Solrak just—he's hearing this droning, but he just powers fucking through it and just keeps on running past everyone that's pa unconscious. In fact. The drone just pisses me off here, and it's race time here! Let's do it. And, uh, I'm gonna charge over, and I'm gonna slash at the son of a bitch with demon sword here. Rawr, you kind of run over, uh, are you going into, like, the cabin area, or in front of the cabin? Like, reaching um, over? I'm going to go around that machine. I'm gonna go through the the Cabin is this thing? It's the, what Wilmore's in, yeah. Okay, he's in the cabin, and the guy's in the cabin with him. Correct? He's right outside of it. Okay, cool. So then I'm gonna come outside of the cabin area. Well, no, wait, actually, no, Wilmore was right outside because Wilmore shot the Eldritch Blast, so he's right outside the cabin. So, yeah. So I don't have to go right in the cabin. Yeah, yeah, you're fine, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, okay, cool. So I'm just gonna come right up to him. Sort it. And yet, correct. 
You gotta see this picture of it, right? That's a 20. A dirty 20. A dirty 20 will do it. With a... F flame sword? Is that what it is? Demon yeah, sword? Yeah, demon sword. Alright, cool. Uh, that is a 12 plus 1d6, if I remember. Yep. So 16 damage on the first one. I'm gonna swing again. Hell yeah. Woohoo! That's 26. 26 is hit, for sure. And that is 12 so far. Let's do 14 damage here. Okay. And, uh, boys know it's time for one slayer here. Thirteen. Thirteen will miss. Yep. Two big slashes with the demon sword, uh, firing into its uh, its flesh, its exoskeleton, and we'll can a little hurt from that. Anything else from Solrek? Uh, that is it. All right. Uh, Brutus is up now. Here's that droning sound. Uh, just kind of driving him nuts. He's going to actually before I do start, I just uh, I move over to Chatton and can can I kick him? Try yeah, him you can kick him. Yep. Uh, he's actually he's he's up now, but you can kick him. Okay, never mind. Right. You can see. <laughs> uh, Brutus is up. He goes over towards Fang and starts licking him on the head, uh, trying to wake him up, but unsuccessfully. So, Wilmore, you're down prone on the ground, feeling fucking lightheaded as shit right now. Uh, what do you do? Someone just kicked him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. your Constitution team throw. Oh, me if you can't save. Okay. Yeah. Hey. It, me being not the, or like unconscious from this guy is that a charm? No. Oh nope. Fuck. Wilmore, your eyes open up after Solrak kicks you, and you just <laughs> your eyes roll back in your head once more. Uh, Sandy. Uh, Sandy's gonna just peck me, I guess. Try to wake me up again. Um, you want it, Sandy to actually hurt you? No, God no. Uh, okay. All right, Sandy just pecks at you, uh, unsuccessfully waking you up, unfortunately. Uh, Chasme is up now, buzzing, bzzz, turns its head to Solrak quickly at a uh, quick angle, <clears throat> and it pecks its long uh, beak right into your body. Um, rolls a 23 to hit. Um, he does a total of... 14 piercing damage, so 7 piercing damage to you. And then 14 necrotic, so another 7 necrotic, and your your HP total goes down by 7. Now, don't with Rage have I have more of a thing with necrotic damage? I, I had that. And, okay. yeah, yeah, so, um... I thought it was, like, totally resistant. So I took 14 damage and lost 7 HP. 7 from your total, so you're down to 72 instead of 79. So on that, I'm t okay, I just put... Do I put negative 7, or do I type in 72 on the tap thing? Um, try... Wil Wilmer, what'd you do? What would I... Um, I did... Oh, there you go. You go. I got it. Put, put cool. The, yeah, there's a there's an override max HP, but like take the damage first, right? Just take the damage. Yeah. And then so Rex got 114 yeah. health right now, though. That's not right. <laughs> it's so, it's nice. Nice. Good job. Oh, <laughs> it says 114 on my screen. <laughs> um, all right, so Fang, you're up, unconscious still, lying that down on the ground, and uh, yeah, unable to get up. What's Cuomo got? I guess. Cuomo has to make a con saving throw. Con saving throw. Oh, nat 20, Cuomo! Cuomo fights through that. Uh, uh through the droning noise. Alright, and then he's gonna claw at the, uh, eyes again. Okay. Alright, come on, Cuomo. Uh, 13. 13 is going to miss. Alright, and then he's going to come over to me and beak me. Going to attack you with advantage. Alright. 
Seven. That's a miss. Come on, Cuomo. Hurt me, bitch. There we go. Ooh, I'm missing that point. Yeah. Uh, uh, 24. An armor strike. And technically, this is a crit because it's within five feet of you and you're unconscious. Wait, what? If uh, you get hit by a melee attack within five feet and you're unconscious, it's an automatic crit. Is a B considered a... Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, uh... So I take 10 damage plus another D10. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, Cuomo just reckon you. Yeah. Alright, so I take 17 damage. Put your boys up. <laughs> She's, he just g goes and wails down into you, doing anything can to wake you up. Driving its beak Jeez, into your flesh right. and drawing blood. Uh, Solrak, what you got? All right here. He's got a con saving th throw first. Yes, he does. <laughs> shh, shh, shut up, Luke. <laughs> you got a con saving throw. Uh, I'm going to sleep, I guess. <laughs> Solrak, he goes to wind his uh his demon sword at the Jasme and just passes out from the droning noise. Uh, Brutus, let's see if Brutus can stay oh. up. I swear to God. Uh, this is nap time. We should just long rest it. Brutus says a 17. Um, you say, let me just Eldritch Blast real quick. Uh, and <laughs> and <laughs> Brutus is going to run over to Solrak and try to wake him up. Uh, doing anything he can to wake him up. Let's see. Uh, 17 on the first one will not work. A 19? Are you? What's your AC right now? 20. Yep. Goes, <laughs> goes to try to bite at you and unable to bite through your your super strong armor. Uh, Wilmore. Oh my god. Still unconscious. <laughs> uh, Sam, what sanity got? Um, she could try to shake me. She can't hit me because I'll die. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sandy right. tries to shake you. Uh, pulling on your clothes and, and it's not... There's nothing that seems to be happening. It's not waking you up at all. This droning noise just keeps driving you nuts. Uh, this Chasme is up now. Uh, still has its its sucker in Solrag's body. Just goes to try to peck it back into him again uh, with advantage because you were unconscious. Um, but rolls a 14 as its max, uh, so that's it. As it just buzzes and flying there. Uh, Fang, what you got? That wake me up? Um, it did not. Because it did not hit you. Oh, come on, that's a... <laughs> What's Clemo got? The, the bee is literally glowing on my screen. Is it? That's hilarious. Yes, it was. Uh, that's <laughs> what happens bullshit. to me all the time, and I'm like, yes! And I'm like, jackass. Promo <laughs> like oh, con save! Twelve! Uh, twelve. Cuomo stays stays awake. Holy shit. Cuomo Fighting through this droning noise. The only one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, he's going to claw at the Yeah, he'll claw at the eyes of the dude. Uh ten. Ten's gonna miss unfortunately. And he's gonna beak at Solrek. Okay. Beak at Solrek. It's a nineteen. He's you have advantage because he's unconscious. Prone. 24 anyways. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah. And uh, that's crit on Solrak though. Yeah, I'm aware. So 10 plus... So 20 damage, Solrak. Had, because you're because you're raging. So t 10 damage. Nice. Oh, and no, you're up. I fell unconscious, my rage goes away. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That's true. Sorry. So yeah, 20 damage. Good call on that. I'm being honest. Ah, knowing your character, that's good. Um, all right, so that's Cuomo then. But Solrak, Constitution saving throw. You're awake. <laughs> let's see if on. let's see if you can pull it through. I wake up like in fucking serious <laughs> pain. Like, oh! <laughs> now I have to fucking do a Constitution saving throw to top it off. I'm gonna sleep again. I'm gonna be pissed off. 
I'm going to sleep again. Solrax just passes back out on his back. Man, oh man. Oh my <laughs> oh, this god. This is rough. <laughs> we haven't even made it to Spardborg yet. <laughs> Better lose some fucking hands. Uh, Brutus makes it up alive. He's, uh. He's... If I wake up. <laughs> Brutus goes up on the edge of the ship and he goes to try to bite at this thing. Uh, just like lunging at it as, as much as he can. Um, let's see. Nah, you can't do it though. A seven and a six. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Wilmore, oh, what you got? Wilmore, uh, still unconscious. Uh, so, yeah, nothing. What stand, <laughs> what stand <laughs> you got? <laughs> I've slept this entire time. And is, is, is there anything like... Oh, um, is there anything like heavy on the ship? Because she actually can't attack. Uh, yeah, there, there's an anchor on the ship, and then there's a couple of oars. Um, Paddles. She'll go and try to drop an oar on um, Fang's head. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alright, she goes and grabs an oar. Just kind of slowly drops it on Fang's head. You can roll a uh, a dex check for her. And add... Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just it's like an episode of the Three Stooges now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to roll a D20. And then he pokes him in the eyes. Whoop, 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 whoop. And then add two to it. A ten. Uh, ten? Yeah, it's not going to do it, unfortunately. Um, Anything else? That's it. Is everyone down right now? Except Cuomo. Okay. Uh, He's... The Jasmine still has its its needle right in Solrak's face. Goes and pecks it back down and towards his body. Um, rolls a a twenty. Oh shit! A, a twenty, you said? Yeah, that is what I rolled. <sighs> well, I wouldn't feel so shitty right now if I had just taken twenty damage. You but, take yeah. twenty six more damage, and. 23 of that is taken off your total health. So, uh, uh, as it pecks its, its needle nose into your body. <clears throat> so now my max health goes down by 23 as well, you said? Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. I'm gonna die, you guys. Um... Okay, and it's still just sucking all this blood and life out of you, Solrak, as you're lying unconscious and your eyes are rolling in the back of your head. Fang, unconscious still. What's Cuomo got? Cuomo. Ugh, fuck, man. Cuomo's got to go for the, uh... He's gonna, yeah. So he's gonna beak at the, uh, the thing. Okay. Come on, Cuomo. Oh wait, hold on. Con save first. No, that's fine. It's a nineteen for that. Oh, it's a nineteen. Okay, cool. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen's gonna miss. All right, and then yeah, Cuomo's gonna grab an oar and drop it on my head. <laughs> okay, uh, do, do a dex check and add your proficiency to it as well. Thirteen plus... That's going to reach uh, it's seventeen. Not, it's not going to be it. enough now. Yeah, it's, yeah, the proficiency of Cuomo. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's not enough, unfortunately. Uh, um, what, what is the... It doesn't say... It, it, his proficiency is probably like one. Because of how low of a CR he is. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say it's it's he's a CR one, so yeah, his proficiency would be one. All right, so uh, tr tries to drop an oar on your head and doesn't wake you up. Question though, would we have advantage, or would he have advantage oh, on yeah. the attack since his needle is stuck in the soul rack? Uh, no. But he he can have advantage on dropping it on you if you want to roll that. Oh no. Yeah, if you want yeah. to roll that again. Yeah, right. Come on, Cuomo! No! Nope. Jesus. Uh, uh Solrak, you're not dead, though. Why? It says that you're dead on our screen. 
at least on my uh, screen. Yeah, it says on my screen too. Uh, but weird. you I have 19 points. You have woken up though. You know, after taking this damage, see if you can pass the con saving throw to stay up. Uh, no. Let's see. It's 20. Yes. Yes. So that gets to his feet. Pops back up. <laughs> feeling fucking yeah. weak. I'm not feeling so hot, you guys. But I'm fucking rage. <laughs> and I'm going to rage <laughs> for my last one. Oh, God. I'm fucking not feeling too hot. Why can't I lower down to my rage? Okay, well, I'll check it after I do this. Yeah, action. good. Swing uh, and now. I'm gonna swing demon sword at this motherfucker. All right. And that's a 22. Hit. 22 definitely hits. There we go. So that is 12 plus my d6, which is a three, so 15 damage. And I'm gonna swing again. Okay, go for it. And that is a 16. 16 will just hit. Thank God. That is a 10 plus 313 damage more. Alright, very nice. Um, flaming Sword strikes into its body twice, slicing through its exoskeleton a bit. The droning noise seems to intense and start buzzing louder and louder. I uh, got another swing. As it's starting, it's starting to look frantic as its little wings start flying in all different directions. Alright. Did I got another swing? Yeah, your, your third swing. Oh, no, no, you, you raged. Oh, I'm sorry. I raged. I raged, yeah. Good call, yep. Uh, Brutus is up now. Con saving throw for him. Uh, nope. Brutus looks like he's ready to launch an attack. Just falls back on the ground. His tongue hangs out of his mouth, and he is passed out. Uh, Wilmore's still unconscious. Sanity. Um, drop an ore on Fang. And roll uh, Dex with advantage. Stop it. I'm just gonna roll this, and then it's plus three. Plus plus one. So thirteen. That's gonna be a miss. And then with advantage. Eight. Uh, both of those are going to miss, unfortunately, as uh, Sandy goes to drop, drop, drop the ore on Fang's head and uh, unable to strike. He's going to like look at the ore. Like, Is there a hole in the ore? Like, how, how are we missing <laughs> dropping this ore on people <laughs> so frequently you from know, like, it's, two inches? It's, it's a little little bird uh, little bird brains. Not not great motor skills, apparently. Fair enough. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's why I give you advantage, man. <laughs> um, all right, so this the Chasmine is up now. It's droning and buzzing, uh, like it's about to pull its needle nose out of Solrak's body, and its little fly wings are buzzing around in different directions. It quickly spins around 180, and nose dives into that portal hole, getting sucked into it, and can't see it underneath the water or beneath the depths at all or anything and that portal seems to swirl around continuously just spinning there uh, only Solrak can see it oh. and I relay what's going on to them they're all unconscious <laughs> oh shit <laughs> alright so so he, so the thing is gone right the chasme is gone yeah beautiful so I'm gonna go to Fang and uh, kick him one place where it'll always wake someone up. Right in the ding dong. Hit him right, right in the ding dong. Wake him up. Fucking Fang takes yep. 10 points of damage as you wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> you destroyed me. <laughs> kick, him yeah. right, kick him right in the Thanks, ding buddy. dong. While, while I'm unconscious. Alright, you gonna do it to Wilmore too? Yep. But to, to Wilmore smaller, so I give him a nut tap. <laughs> you get him. Just a little nut tap, but he's got such big nuts, it still does nine damage to him. And I'm dead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> two health, man. That's why do you think I wasn't trying to hurt myself? <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. You just killed me. <laughs> <Be a nut -tap. laughs> I, I always knew he 
go this no, way. You, li you literally just woke up the cleric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have just healed me. You just woke yeah. up the cleric. Oh, you guys, I guess I went a little nuts. <laughs> 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 you can oh, see yeah. I just cracked inside. <laughs> oh, I guess I got a little testy. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. right, this is where I come in now. <laughs> Alright, put all my sillies in a sack. I'm done. <laughs> Carlos does the world. Follow it. <laughs> Alright, um. God. Since I don't have any spell slots left, I am. Hold on. You have a cantrip. Yeah, That's I'm gonna cast Spare the Dying on him. He's stable. He... But... You see him, he's still unconscious, lying there, but he's definitely stable now as you go over and apply your, your palm to him and use Lathander's healing ways to make sure the body doesn't pass on to the other side. That just collapsed into one day. I, now this is officially the most hurt I've ever been here. And uh, since the thing is gone, is my max damage still, this, this still lowered, or is it back to normal? You feel as if you have been physically weakened from this being sucking this life force and blood and energy from you. You don't feel any... like you've gained that strength back in you. And as you look out to the water, the portal spins and spins. You hear that droning sound once more. Can, um, can, can Sanity, like, pull, uh, I've got a potion in my pocket. Can she go for that? Sure. Oh, yeah. Try to feed it to me. Sure. Alright, she's gonna feed me a health potion. Alright, go ahead and roll 2d4 plus 2. Um, yeah, you watch as that portal is spinning and spinning, and you feel like you hear that droning noise once more. And then the portal sinks into the water and disappears. So disappeared. Well, I, uh, I have that the one that I, the potion that I had was the one of greater healing, so that's the one I took. You're taking a greater healing potion right now? That's the only one I had. So. I mean, we could just try to take a take a rest now. I mean, we are still in a boat. That's true. Even Ooh. if it's a short rest, just roll some hit die at least. I, I did Fine. say I had taken it. So. Oh wait, no, I do have a potion of healing. Never mind. So I take the potion of healing. That's what I had taken. Two D four plus two. Two D four plus two. So, Wilmore awakens after Sandy pours this healing potion into his mouth, and his eyes open up, lying there on the deck of the back of this, uh, this little boat that you all have here, and feeling physically much, much weaker, and looking paler than normal as well. Ooh. Feel good. <laughs> yeah. Great. Tennington, let me help you out there. And I'm gonna pull out uh, my special ointment and uh, kind of take his head, prop it up, and just start rubbing it into his uh, his forehead. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, you can certainly do that. As Wilmer mentioned, you guys also could just take a rest. Yeah, let's take a rest. Long, sure. A long rest. You guys can do whatever I you mean, want. I mean, we can either do a short rest or a long rest. I mean, I, I don't know how far place we are in the middle. Uh, I, I, I'm really hurt, so I'm literally like laying down. <laughs> can really can we just like can we just like sit here in a rest? And if it's if it's less than eight hours, take a short rest. Yeah, absolutely. How how far are we to Spartanburg? Yeah. So we're at we, you know where we're. From. No. I don't know. I think, I think right I now we're just in the middle of the, of the ocean. The reason I ask is because if we're, you know, at least a day's worth of travel out, I could, uh, you know, I could keep watch for a few hours, make sure you guys get a decent amount of rest with that, without any interruption. 
and maybe halfway through I'll go ahead and decide to take my rest. That way we're only out for a couple hours. <clears throat> That's not a bad idea. That sounds good. Since I also have the most health too. <clears throat> I definitely can't say I'm, if something hits me. I'm going down. I as well. My yeah, nine let's, health. Let's do that. So you guys, of course, noticed that that portal appeared after Wilmore shot off his Eldritch Blast into the ocean after these knucklehead trout. You guys have, of course, also noticed some strange, chaotic things to have been happening after Wilmore cast a few spells recently. Man, this is weird, but my health like disappeared off the screen, and I can't get it back. Because <laughs> you're on death saves right now. Yeah, no, but I can't get out of that. It's because you you have to give yourself some sort. What health are should you be at? Uh, it would be like twelve plus five, so seventeen. There you go. Should I just refresh my sheet? I guess. Yeah, refresh it. <clears throat> Say any Everybody. anything? I'm good now. Okay, so I'm yeah, I'm gonna take a take a rest for sure. Sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Just just you and and Wilmore. I was gonna mention how do you guys noticed? I, I guess you guys maybe heard me, but blocked it out or something. No one responded to it. But that you guys saw Wilmore, you know, having some strange things happen with his spells recently? Or maybe you guys just don't care? Oh, fuck Wilmore, I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm, just I, uh... I'm just quietly contemplating. Yeah, so what's the deal with that, Chaddington? I've noticed that's the third time something weird's happened from an Eldritch Blast. What gives? I mean, sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not, I guess. It's you uh... pissed off that demon! And now weird things are happening. That is true. That is true. I've got to. I can't. I. I can't fix it till the next full moon, unfortunately. Next full moon. Uh, that's. You know what happens the next full moon? Yes, yes. You get hungry and start to smell them. Well, that'll be your reminder to not forget this time, then, chatting. Oh, I've got quite the ritual set up. Make it quick. Don't piss <laughs> off any more demons. Maybe stop Eldrick Blasting shit. But I like Eldrick Blasting shit. Well, almost just got us killed. Well, I mean, I saved the day. Your, your, your nut tap did uh, send him over, so wreck. Hey! <laughs> and when I look over at point over at Cuomo, and what the hell was that? What do you mean? 20 damage. I woke you up. Yeah. You were unconscious, Fang. Cuomo woke you up. Cuomo woke him up. He woke you up. I hurt me more than the goddamn creature. Uh, I agree to disagree, buddy. You're, you're looking very beat up. Yeah. No thanks to your stupid bird. You should be having it for dinner. Listen. If it weren't for him waking you up, it... I would have fucking been way stronger right now. I went right back to sleep, didn't I? <laughs> we could have all died. <laughs> Whatever, just look. You guys get some rest. I'll I'll hang out and take cover or uh, watch out. And uh, when I decide it's a decent time for me to hit the hay, I'll I'll do so. But I'll, for right now, I'll keep lookout. Literally just crash and immediately just <laughs> start snoring away. Well, more anything that you do? Are we doing a long or a short rest? I believe you guys are so attempting to just hard? take a full sleep and long. long rest. Yeah, I was trying to take a long rest. Um, <clears throat> I'm just completely beat and just kind of, um, 
debating just 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 shooting off another Eldritch one. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not going to. It's right into the sky. Yeah. Nah, you find yourself a, a little corner in this cabin to tuck away into and uh, get some shut eye as well. Fang, is there anything as you just sit out on the open deck and look out to the sea and the stars and keep an eye out in the area? Is there anything that you do? You know, as I as I mentioned earlier, you know, being you know, on this ship heading towards Swartborg to the uh, to Jarl's throne being one step closer to stopping the fire giants uh, I make sure the the gents are, they're not paying attention as a single tear sheds from my eyes thinking about my father and just trying to avenge his death from the ruthless fire giants and I uh, I give Cuomo some uh, TLC Heading him in his uh his tickle spots, uh, and just kind of keep look out with a, with a mm-hmm. smile on my face. Cool. Now you you do know that this is separate from the, like going to Svardborg is separate from the fire giants, right? Yeah, but the the conch is we're you know, we're trying to rebuild the uh, the staff, Von and Dodds. You guys aren't trying to rebuild that. You guys are just trying to get Earth. these pieces of the conch to get uh-huh. to Ma- Maelstrom, which is the Storm Storm Giant's stronghold. You need two pieces of the conch to do that. And you guys know that the Frost Giants have one, and the Fire Giants have one. The strongholds. Aren't we trying to stop the Fire Giants from obtaining those pieces? No, fi- Fire Giants have a conch. Your the conch is completely separate from Vone and Dodd. Oh. Uh. Yes. The conches are what uh, Anum, the all the Oracle, told you all that you guys needed. Two, yeah, two of them to sure. get to um, Maelstrom, the Storm Giant stronghold. And he let you guys know specifically that, as Wilmore has mentioned, that one sits on the icy throne of Jarl at um, the Sea of Moving Ice, and, and that one sits in um, with the Fire Giants as well. In their uh, at their forge. This is going on before I go to sleep. I, I poke a chat into and I say, "Hey, Wilmore, the Fang over there being stupid." <laughs> then I go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, because you heard all that. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's gonna hear it. But no, I mean, you, you weren't there with the All Father, so I mean, you only know what they have told you, of course, about all this. But yeah. Uh, just making sure that that was clear, because I, I don't want you guys thinking one thing's one thing, and it's not that, and then you're, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's one conch here, the other conch on the conch, east, the and then you blow them, and you go to the maelstorm to get the storm giant. I'm not where blowing the game is. <laughs> He's got it. He's got it. I gotcha. So, uh, Fang, you, uh, you're uh, thinking to yourself and thinking back how, you know, you want to avenge your father and your family, and make sure that you lead this crew to a uh, a heroic battle and, and and prove yourself worthy and you sail off into the night and we'll call it a night right here indeed beautiful <sighs> you guys are so lucky I kept falling asleep otherwise I'd have killed that thing myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah you uh, and more of those Eldritch Blasts right dude I, I had a plan I had a plan. Yeah, all that damage you guys put in. Yes, as I mentioned, uh, <laughs> Wil- Wilmore and Solrak, you both are feeling extremely weak. And uh, we'll see if you, when you guys wake up in the morning if you feel any stronger. But, like P. Yeah. Diddy? Uh, <laughs> probably not. He doesn't ex- exist in this universe. <laughs> in this realm, if you will. Diddy P. does, though. That's correct. Oh, he does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Puff Mama. Uh-oh. All right, so good game, guys. You guys made it to the Sea of Moving Ice. Finally, set and sail on a boat with the uh, wind in your hair. Yeah, right. It's been it's been, it's been a while. Uh, so. <laughs> <It's> been a while. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, yeah, good shit, guys. We'll uh, we're taking off this weekend. We'll pick back up probably next weekend. Uh, actually, yeah, unless you guys want to play sometime during the week instead, or in addition. Wink, wink, nudge, yeah. nudge. Uh, we'll talk about it in Discord. Uh, if you guys have anything else you want to talk with me, feel free to let me know in the Discord, or you guys can let me know now. All right, that was your time to let me know. With that said, everyone, uh, have a great night. Love y'all. Watch out for those goblins on the stairs. And thank you, Jeff Greenspan, for the theme song. Catch you on the flip yeah. side. Yeah. Later. See you guys. Arrivederci.